Introducing Next Gen 50, the new home. School up. Well, where does this come from? Covering everything the school game has to offer in both the North and Southern Hemispheres. Oh, it's a great tackle. It's not good enough. One, two, skip a few and with the wheels. Highlighting tomorrow's stars, Next Gen 15 will be bringing you live games and regular updates of all the news and in-depth views on the global game. What's the kick? All your school rugby, all in one place. This is Next Gen 50. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the kickoff of the 2022 Colston Sevens Festival here at the Premium Sevens Festival in the southwest of England. We've got a real cracker to start off on the first game of the day in Group B. It's the host, Colston School, up against Abingdon. A really exciting fixture to kick off Group B, which also includes Exeter School and Moncton. I'm Wilfred Kemsley, here today with Next Gen 15 for your coverage of Pitch 3. Aberdeen School from just south of Oxford, of course. Coming off the back of a tough 15 schedule, which included a big win versus Sherbourne School, one of the only teams to beat Colston this season. They've had an excellent 15 season Colston. But now, as uh, winter drifts away and we shift in towards the beginning of the sevens season, the host, of course, semi finalists in 2019. We'll be looking for some really strong performances on their home turf. Abingdon looking to cause a bit of an upset. We've seen them warm up today so far. They've looked really sharp, have Abingdon. And it's getting lively here in the southwest of England. Colston School just tucked away into the city of Bristol. It's a fantastic day for rugby. Kickoff will be in two minutes time for the first game in Group B. Really exciting tournament lined up for you all here. We'll be live throughout most of the day. Positions here on pitch three. Colston's main ground. Really beautiful pitch we've got in front of us today. Quick look at Abingdon's 15 season so far. They've been really competitive in fixtures against Eton, against Guildford, against Radley School, really high-end schools. Colston, on, on the other hand, however, 
of their rich history, seven times winners of the uh, National Schools Cup. Look at Colston's team today. Starting lineup: we've got Nathan Dix, Max Pullen, and Louis White. Will Crouch, Will Crowshaw, Paddy Pierce, Connor Massey, and Jake Gaskell. Ollie Lamb, Nick Jarmu, Jane Thornton, Melan Raj, Harry Lee, and Rowan Chatterjee complete a really strong looking lineup. A couple of really strong players to say Max Pullen in uh, his final year, dynamic ball carrying hooker, currently with the Bristol Bears. That physical presence in the game of sevens can be really important. Another one to watch out for is Harry Lee, one of the fittest players in the team, according to his coach. Incredibly hard-working player can be really important in these short fixtures. And the skipper, Paddy Pierce today for Colston, captain of both 15s and 7s, an integral part of the Bristol Bears under-18 team, who won the under-18 Academy League this year, going unbeaten all season. On the fringes of England under-18, there are a few under-20s, under-18 England players missing today for Colston School. but it'll be Abingdon to get us underway here on pitch three. Exeter and Moncton playing elsewhere today this morning. But it'll be Addington's number seven to get us underway here. And Colston look to start sprightly as they play up through the midfield. And already causing an overlap are Colston. Aberdeen looking to cause a real upset here against the host. Brought down just inside the halfway. And it's turnover ball for Abington. And a lack of rolling away there by the number seven, Connor Massey, has left Abington with the ball. He'll get it underway quickly. And it's chipped ahead there. And it's knocked on again there, it's the skipper who can't recover for Colston, and it will be an opening try for Abingdon really early, just 45 seconds in there, some really creative work from the Abington man. Lovely, delicate chip and chase there. Paddy Pierce couldn't gather, and it was chipped through once again. It's number seven for Abington, player to look out for perhaps, really excellent work so far as the rest of his team scramble back to the halfway. Solid contact. And an excellent kick from all the way out wide there. Those two points can be crucial in a game where nudging the ball is so complicated here. Really clever work. Chip and chase there. And very physical there in the contact. Kicked through. Touchdown unopposed. And it'll be Abington to get us underway once again. Really, really strong start from the visiting side against the hosts, who will be looking to improve from their semi-final position in the cup last time. And again, Colson seems to have found the overlap, but they can't convert. Key part of the game of sevens is with so many less players on the pitch, so much space. It's key, it's making where and when do you position your defenders? How do you stop these overlaps from happening? So far, Colson have found some real joy on the outside, but unable to convert so early on. And that throw not straight in the line out, it's a difficult thing to uh, finish off in sevens, but Colston will get us underway. And it's through the middle there, goes Milan Raj, tips it on there to the number 12, Jamie Thornton. And Thornton, despite some excellent work from the Abington defence, will touch down. And Colston have the opportunity to equalise. Really hard line there from Milan Raj, quick, powerful, physical centre. And Jamie Thornton there. A centre in the 15s game as well. Link up from the 15th season between the two of them. And the two points converted, and that will be the response that Colston were looking for. Still only three minutes into this uh, opening half there. It was a really quick tap from that free throw. <laughs> Lovely footwork and the quick ball inside. And one missed tackle in the game of sevens can be really crucial. And it's been spilled from the kickoff there. Just seen there, kickoff by Colston, spilled by Abington's number 12. And it's going to be a scrum down for Colston, just inside Abington's 10 metres. Really powerful start so far. We've seen some great running, some great footwork. Some great work with the ball off the toe. 
and Colston will look to gain the lead for the first time in this fixture from this attacking position. Disruptive Abington scrum, but the ball comes out there again through Raj. And it's pulled back onto the halfway. It's great footwork there by Ryan Chatterjee. Here's Raj again. And here's the skipper. Pierce tips it out wide. And there's space on for the powerful dynamic Pullen to run. And it's the offload inside once again to Raj. Great footwork as Pierce keeps it alive. The ball is freed now. And here's an opportunity for Lee. Wide again. Chastity back to Lee. Great pressure there from the Abington defence. But a high tackle called by the referee. Just inside Abington's 10 metre on this near right hand side once again. And Colson will have ball to play with. And here it is through the skipper once again. Pierce. And it's tantalising footwork there and a good fend as well. Lovely offload out the back there from Ollie Lamb. But again, this strong, powerful Abington defence pushed Colson back to their halfway. Lamb under a bit of pressure once more. And a turnover there, just short of the halfway line for Abington. Really strong defensive work there. You thought Lamb had uh, carved himself up a bit of space. But pressure on the nine, some powerful counter-rucking elements of the 15 game. As once again, the ball is slipped through. And the chase is on there with Raj Frederick back. But it's been nudged on by Abington's number three once more. But no luck this time. Really clever work once again, though, from uh, the man in control, number seven for Abington. No names, unfortunately, supplied by the Abington staff today. They'll be uh, mixing and matching the shirts as the game goes on. Thank you to Colson for uh, all the information you provided. But still, Abington are in the fight here, seven all, as we creep ever closer to half time in this first Group B fixture. And it's a deep clearance there by Lamb. But Abington will return. And again, they go to the toe. Off the boot. Abington have had success so far, but it's swept up once again by Lamb. Tackle. And they're powerful in the contact once again, but Abington have turned it over. This time, just inside Colton 22. And it's powerful Tackle running from Abington as they recycle possession. They go to the short side. Tackle. Pick and go there, and still Abington hold possession. And now they look to go wider as they take it through the midfield. Excellent footwork to create some space. And again they go to the toe, but this time it's swept up by Colston, and they have the opportunity to exit. Sorry, 30 seconds. Leave, leave. You've got it. Colston from inside their five look to play. Excellent handling there, and they look to find an edge. And here's Lee out on the wide, wide channels. He's got options around him, he goes to the boot. And Harry Lee's got him for pace. It's picked up really well. One pass inside, and that is a fantastic try. Finished off by Connor Massey. All through Harry Lee there. Got his way onto the outside. Beat the first defender. And as he's dragged down inside Abingdon's 22, the offload away. And that will be the two points added. And the seven minutes are up, and it's half time here. Lee found himself on the outside channel with some excellent work. And again, off the boot, it's been so successful so far today for both teams. And this is a great pickup under pressure. Two defenders on him, flicks the ball away, and Colston will go into half time with a seven point lead. A frantic game so far, as you expect, from a sevens tournament of this calibre. But at half time, it'll be 14 points to seven in Colston's favour in this opening game of Group B. A really exciting start, not a minute's rest for either side as they look to take in the meshes at half time. We'll be back very shortly for the second half of this Group B fixture here at the Colston Sevens.
and a changing of ends after this eventful first half, which sees Colston seven points to the good for Abingdon against the host, against arguably the favourites. We've put up a real fight so far, and it's Colston who will get us back underway. So knock on. And it's a knock on there by the Colston player, so Abingdon, a bit of free ball to play with. Okay, no advantage coming. coming. And Abingdon will have a platform to build from from just inside their 10 metres. Scrum. Scrum pink. We've had one scrum so far. It was a powerful Abington shove. Perhaps see a repeat again. A bit of Abington dominance in the front row. Pink just come right up to it. Despite the presence of some genuine front row uh, in Colson's front three, which is a rarity at sevens of this level. Yep. And there you see the counter shove, but it has been swept up by Abington. Turnover on the floor there. And another 10 metres for Colston to play with. And a card is coming out there. And Colston still play a card there after a uh, deliberate tackle slowing down the pace of play. But Pierce will come away with it with a big fend. Puts one man down and another. He'll throw it back inside now for Massey. Tackle. Really physical line there, but it's been Stop spilt. Forward. Knocks on there, and now Abington will come away with it. One man Close. down, but still with ball to play with Close. as they Tackle. crash up to their 22. Down. Tackle release. Good. Good cool release from the referee as Abington looks to play with it. And the number two tips it on there. And it's another fantastic run through, the, through that on. far left hand Use. side for Abington. Use. Abington Use. with a man down. Still with ball in possession. Backwards. And it's Lloyd, the captain there. And still the wide channel, Abington have it. Release. Dragged down there by Chatterjee. Clear release. Mark's here. But no clear release and it's a Colston penalty. Too pink. Leave the ball. Turnover yep. on the floor now and Colston still with a man advantage, have ball to play with. Free Pierce. Out there to Pullen. Pullen finds Thornton, the scorer of the uh, sister of Colson's first try, is the skipper who tips it on there to Chatterjee. Tackle! Brought down, Release. but still Colson ball. Yep. Pierce man handles his man out of the ruck. Massey wants more. Been really impressive with his running line so far. Tackle! Colson building slowly now inside the 22. Here's the captain Pierce again. It's a wider ball there, out to Lamb. And Lamb has Jamu outside him as he looks to flick it on, but still, Tackle. Lamb carries really strongly there. No, sealed off. And it's a penalty sealed there. No. It's Nick Jamu who's been criticised there for sealing off at the ruck. Not allowing the Abington men to get any hands on ball. And now Abington have an opportunity to play with. Just a substitution made off to the back there. Tackle. And a turnover on the floor, and a quick tap there by the captain and leader Pierce. Looks to go on his own, breaks one tackle, the offload away. And it's wide there to Thornton, dummy step inside, and from five metres out, Jamie Thornton goes crashing over to extend Colson's lead. It was an excellent tap and go there by the skipper, Pierce, to open the space. Just on the 15. Yeah, time. And it's finished there by the number 12, Jamie Thornton. He's had an excellent game so far, been involved in uh, all the best bits of Colson's play. And Lamb will slot the conversion. And that's an excellent turnover there by the skipper. And the tap and go knocks off one man, draws in the defenders. Excellent offloading play on the floor. And then the step inside. Almost unnecessary. Could have taken it to the outside. Fancy to show for the cameras, and Thornton's over. Also first team hockey for this school, captain of the first 15, so a really talented multi-sportsman, as Abington will look to respond. Abington back restored to full company of players, and the tackle's been broken there, and it's Lamb one-on-one, -on -one, last defender, and he's beaten too, but back comes Chatterjee. Open play, no tackle, tackle. And now the tackle's called, still Abington possession. High tackle. High tackle there on the Abington okay, man, the just outside the 22, it's Abington ball to play with. They've got just two minutes, just over two minutes left of this fixture to 
claw back a result in this opening game of Group B. It's powerful Colson defending has driven them back to their 10 metre. But still having some ball. And the ball was out there and Colson have turned it over. No playing on the nine and Thornton footwork looks to break him away again. And it's an excellent offload there, but spilled by Colston. And it's still Abington ball. Pushed all the way back to inside their 10 metre. And another knock on there. But Abington retained the advantage. Into the last two minutes now, this opening game of Group B. Colston currently two tries to the good. But in the game of sevens, things can change oh so quickly. Last scrum saw a powerful shove from uh, Nathan Dix, the back rower. Max Pullen, the real hooker. And uh, Will Crawshaw, the second row. Genuine Set. forwards in the forward pack today for uh, Colson as they look to get the shove on, but it's Abington ball. And Abington must feel that this is their last opportunity. Two tries needed as they race away to the outside. Fantastic tackle there by Jamu on that wide channel. And the ball is out, and Colson have stolen it once again. Really excellent work in the ruck for them today. As they look to play wide through Crawshaw. Clever play from Crawshaw and Chatterjee with great footwork. Beats his man. Back to Crawshaw. And Lamb. Real game player, Lamb. A big fend on him as well. And that's excellent handling there. Flick out the back, but it's just been spilled by Jamu. But now Colson looked to break, and here's Jamu once again. It's another offload, the right idea, but Abington will sweep up as you come into the final stages of this opening game. Abington look to finish on a positive from inside their 22. Last play. Last play, Last play called by the referee. Nothing to lose for Abington here as they take it down the short side. Still Abington ball. They take it down the short side once again. Offload and ball inside with a slip there, but still play on, no tackle, as Abington look to create. And it's a fantastic offload there, with the last man being Ollie Lamb once more, an excellent tackle. But now here is Abington's opportunity. They've got numbers out on this near right-hand side. Space through the middle. And it's a foot race to the line now. Thornton with a covering tackle. Excellent offload inside, but it does not go to hand. And Colston recover. Last play. Last time. And it's been nudged by two players off the pitch. White and Thornton finally able to clear the ball. The game was truly over as we came into the last play. An excellent win for Colston. Four points for a win in this competition. So they will go straight to the top of Group B, depending on the uh, results of Exeter and Moncton's fixture. But a dominant display from the host, exactly the start they wanted but don't go anywhere because next on Next Gen 15, we have the first game from Group D on pitch three, Whitchurch School against King's College, Taunton. It'll be a fiery affair for the opening of Group D. Here the highlights here, really strong start from Abington. They shocked the hosts, 45 seconds in, but an instant reply from Colston through this wonderful centre partnership. Great running lines and a great offload, Thornton who had an excellent game. Scored their first try, and then some excellent work one-on-one -on -one by Harry Lee. The boot's been really important for both sides. Look at that pick up there, that's fantastic work. Perfect one for the highlight reel for Massey to go over. And then this was the end of the game, the skipper Paddy Pierce with a great turnover, great fend, got momentum moving Colson's way, and some great offload play on the floor. Allowed Thornton to go in for his second try. Excellent dummy and great footwork will put the man away. So that'll close off the opening of Group B here on pitch three with Next Gen 15's coverage. But up next, another really important fixture in the, out, in the early stage of this tournament. King College Thornton up against Whitchurch, the Welsh side. Lots expected from both sides today. Whitchurch, of course, full of Cardiff Blues players. They've got a really strong connection with that academy lineup. 
And King College Staunton played a lot of teams in this competition so far, including wins over Exeter School, with uh, tough losses to Clifton and Bristol so far in their 15 season. Got a lineup down for uh, King's College Staunton as well today, which we excellently aid the coverage. And Whitchurch in that tough Welsh league they played in. Last time I was at which I was commenting on Whitchurch with the 15s and Joseph's College Festival early in the season. They'd had a really tough start. But in the second half of the season, they've brought it back with uh, seven league wins. And that really tough Welsh setup that they uh, are so experienced in. Crossing the border today to take on the premium South Westerly Sevens tournament. And kickoff will be very shortly between Whitchurch and King's College Taunton. It's constant rugby here for you today at the Colson Sevens with Next Gen's live coverage on pitch three. I am Wilfred Kemsley. And today I'll be taking you through Whitchurch as they get us underway against King College Tauntment. High looping kick there, but tap back really well. And Taunton will play it, come away with it. King's College looking to start brightly with a switch inside there to Spokes. And it's been nudged on really well there by. Tommy Foa, who's on a foot race there with the Whitchurch man. Going to be a penalty there for diving off your feet in the ruck. And now Whitchurch will look to counter. Whitchurch, a really physical side. With some strong carries early on. And Whitchurch looked to play from outside there, 22. Lovely tackle there. One on one, the offload now. A bit of space in this wide channel. <laughs> and his hard work. Good leg drive and contact taken. But a turnover there by King's College number one. Come on, John, get up, John. And Taunton come away with it for a knock on in the midfield. Scrum down. Well, it's a ferocious start for this fixture so far. Rafa! With uh, Whitchurch. Rafa! Who kept inside their own half. Rafa, come on, Early on substitute on. made, unfortunately. Can we have the next man ready? Sorry to ask. Yeah, And there'll be changes made early on for Whitchurch, unfortunate. But this, the uh, first game in Group D. A really hotly contested group. And this is an excellent platform for Whitchurch to play with. And then Nine goes shooting down this wide channel. And it's a foot race there. He's dragged down well by the Taunton man. But Whitchurch have ball to play with in their half as they look to go coast to coast. Penalty advantage from the referee, so free ball to play with. And it's offside in the midfield. And Whitchurch will get the game underway. No snow love on this side of the pitch, no space to play with, but still Whitchurch recycle the ball. Bit of depth needed for Whitchurch if they want to play wider. And great footwork there to break the defensive line. Knock on there from Blue. But it's unfortunately a knock on there. Roll! And Taunton will have ball to play with. Knock on advantage, over! And it's wide. No advantage now, but the man on the overlap. And that man is Charlie Charland, who's got one man to beat. Gets rid of him with the fend. Excellent offload inside. But the ball cannot be controlled. And Whitchurch will look to play from it from inside their five. Offloaded well. And then there we have another one on one in this wide channel. The Whitchurch man brought down. And the ball is flung back into their five. Great offload out the back there. And Whitchurch looks to play from it from this dangerous position. And now the tackle is made. But it's an easy exit there for Whitchurch. Foul play in the ruck. Going beyond the ball and losing the footwork there. And now Whitchurch will finally have the opportunity to exit. A frantic start in this first three minutes. The ball going back and forth in this Group D encounter. So early on, the sun's out finally at Colston School. And it'll be kick long. Excellent nudge there just outside of Whitchurch 10 metre, exactly the kind of clearance they needed. The other game in Group D this morning, QEH versus Kingswood. Happening elsewhere. But uh, next gen are here on pitch three, watching this fascinating encounter. 
between Whitchurch Guys, two calls. and King's College Taunton. Hello. First game of the day was already 7 all at this go. point. It's a much closer affair, much tighter affair as Colston looked to run away with their last fixture. No signs of that so far in this fixture. With Whitchurch line out following that penalty inside their five metre. It's a clean line out move there from Whitchurch, so difficult to execute. And an excellent miss pass there. And I believe a Whitchurch man on the outside channel as he shrugs off his man. High tackle as well. And Whitchurch have gone. As they look to switch to the wide channels. They come back on the short side. Flat. Number 11's beaten again by a Whitchurch man. Excellent shot there, but clean Whitchurch balls to play with. Whitchurch have the overlap as they can use it. The ball is lobbed flat over the top and outstanding pass leaves a Whitchurch man free on this wide channel. Brought down excellently well, but offloaded even better off the floor. And now Whitchurch inside the 22. Clever footwork from the number 10. Five metres out, one more offload away. And a final offload will allow Whitchurch over. Excellent KBA, a crucial part of the sevens game. And all the way from inside their five metre, one penalty, an excellent penalty clearance, and Whitchurch have gone coast to coast to open the scoring in this Group D fixture. What a fantastic try is. Try of the day so far, even if we are so early on in our coverage. And Whitchurch will look to add the extras. Two points secured. And with just under two minutes to go in this first half, Whitchurch will be kicking off. What an outstanding try we've just witnessed in the uh, opening state, opening half of this Group D fixture. And as are the rules and sevens, it'll be Whitchurch to get us underway. Number 20, the try scorer. It's kicked high into the Bristol early morning sky. And Staunton looked to play quickly down this wide channel. The ball is on inside. No offload away so far. Played off the floor well. Tries with him. Kings will play through the midfield. Excellent leg drive there on the 10 metre. And ball secured strongly by Taunton, who now have the man overlap. And it's the dummy sold by the number five. He's got himself free and away. There'll be no catching that man as he dots it down under the post. And an instant reply there from King College Taunton is exactly what they would be hoping for. Which just seemed to switch off there for a moment. Following their opening score, they do say the most vulnerable, you are most vulnerable when you have just scored. And in the game of sevens, any gap can be exploited. And Whitchurch's 14 was left all on his own there, defending that two on one. An excellent dummy by the number five as the kick is converted. It's really excellent work. Just clinical from uh, King's College. Five seconds. They've not had all the, all the rub of the green in this half, but a two on one there, an excellent pass, an excellent dummy. And uh, there's no one in the backfield to catch the King's College man. And King Thomas Taunton will get us underway. <laughs> Claimed excellently well by Whitchurch as we head into overtime into this first half. And Whitchurch will call an end to the first half of this Group D fixture. A really exciting affair, as all sevens fixtures will be today at the Colston Sevens. It's seven all into half time. No, 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 it's absolutely fine. I'm used to it. Right then, guys, come on. Seven five, even at half time here with Whitchurch taking that two point advantage. And we'll be back very shortly after the messages are taken on board from the coaching staff for the second half of this Group D encounter. Introducing Next Gen 15, the new home, School Up. Well, where does this come from? Covering everything the school game has to offer in both the North and Southern Hemispheres. Oh, that's great tackle! Oh, it's not good enough! One, two, skip a few and with the wheels! 
highlighting tomorrow's stars, Next Gen 15 will be bringing you live games and regular updates of all the news and in-depth news on the global game. What's a kick? All your school rugby, all in one place. This is Next Gen 15. And we're back for the second half of the opening fixture of Group D at the Colston Sevens, the premium sevens competition in the southwest of England here on pitch three with Next Gen. Whitchurch from across the border in Wales, currently two points up against King College Taunton. It's been a really tight affair. Neither side has looked to dominate, but it'll be King's College Taunton to get us underway. Which church man brought down just inside his 10 metre? Fascinating first half of rugby. Really tight affair, really back and forth. But it's really physical Whitchurch church side. We'll look to build from that uh, impressive first half performance. And of course the overlap early on as they come back inside. No man near there and it could be a turnover ball and it will be by, Ta by Taunton. As they look to play down the short side with men on the floor. And the number one is free, one man to beat. The tap tackle is not efficient. And early on in this first half, it'll be King's College Taunton to open the scoring in this second half. A great turnover on the floor there. Just shows how crucial every second of possession is in the game of sevens. Whitchurch came down the short side, didn't have the numbers to match despite making some excellent leeway up into their 10 metres. And one turnover is all that's needed. Really clever from uh, King's College to come down the short side where the players on the floor were there. And that conversion won't add any points. King's College now three points up in front for the first time in this fixture. See there, one turnover, a really clever decision to come down the short side. Bit of a physical mismatch on this uh, near side. And as uh, the King College players flood the gap, the score was always incoming following that excellent counter-attack. And it'll be King College to get us underway once more. Short kick there as uh, the Whitchurch man looks to take it up the midfield. But he's driven back by King's College's try scorer. But an overlap on this short side. As Whitchurch, little shimmy takes it on the inside, brought down well. But still Whitchurch ball. Caught well in the midfield, but offloaded even better by the Whitchurch man, who retained possession really well. So important not to rush your play in the game of sevens. But another turnover by the King's College man. So good on the floor so far. That's been the real difference between the sides in this second half. And there's an overlap once more on that far side as King's College Taunton looks to go wide. Now the offloads inside will leave space for the number 12. Drag down well, just short of the five metre. But one more flick from the floor will allow King's College Taunton to go over once more. Once again, a counter attack there from a quick turnover, just as Whitchurch looked to build something really special. And uh, the pressure is now on Whitchurch to respond so early in this second half. Great ball over the top there. And then the two offloads inside. This final offload, excellent work to flick it up from the floor. Great hands. And so far, as I've said, the difference between these two sides as the sun looks to shine down on the uh, excellent pitch here at Colston School has been that work on the floor. Two turnovers and then within two phases, tries have been scored. as is the play in Rugby Sevens. It'll be the try scorers to get us underway once more. In search of a ball as a referee. It's called time off, no one has recovered. And once again, Whitchurch with their proud rugby history, the likes of Sam Warburton, come through their side. 
most recently. It's uh, Christ Chinzuo, the Welsh squad. They look to respond here with uh, four minutes left in this opening Group D fixture. Excellent kick there by the King's College man. Untakeable really for Whitchurch as they look to play for the midfield. Number one's been their most dangerous carrier so far, but they've got an overlap once more. They don't choose to use it as they come back through the midfield. Number one's a powerful runner as he flicks it inside once more. Excellent fend, excellent offload. And that try might just take this game away from Whitchurch, who looked so strong and so bright in this first half. But that came all the way from the kickoff, an excellent tap back. And once you're on the back foot in the game of sevens, once the momentum isn't with you, it can be really difficult to come back. You see there that wonderful line run by the number 15. He was starting, he was starting outside. King's College is number one. Changes line as uh, the fend is given. Available on the inside. And that will put King's College Taunton 22 points up to seven against Whitchurch. With just over two minutes left in this opening game. We'll see if Whitchurch can change the momentum as they look to build. Lovely footwork there to beat the first tackler. And this time the ball is secured in the ruck. Strong fend from the Whitchurch man, allows the offload away and a bit of space in this wide channel, but an excellent tackle there by Taunton's man. And still Whitchurch ball just outside their 22. Excellent work on the ground once more. But he's been brought off his feet. The referee calls hands off, and Whitchurch again go down this short side. There's a poor play in the ruck there. Once the ball was done, the referee didn't like what he's seen, and now there's a counter on for King's College. And it's excellent running there by the number four. He beats two men to dot down. And that's been the story of Whitchurch's half. It's just been some ill discipline or some excellent work by King's College in the ruck. Every counter-attack is only one or two phases. There's very little you can do in the game of sevens once the ball is turned over and you're on the back foot. And uh, a few tired legs on the Whitchurch side as the points are racked up. This result will certainly put King's College Taunton at the top of Group D. You know, the referee calls a penalty there. Didn't like what he saw in that ruck from the Whitchurch man. And it didn't take long. Beats his first man. Big fend to the face of Whitchurch 15. And now Whitchurch look to build. They've been pushed back to just outside their five metre. And again, it's a messy ruck for Whitchurch to deal with. And the pressure is really on here on Whitchurch. This momentum that King's College Taunton have built up has really put them in a difficult situation. And another turnover in the ruck. A quick tap. And the ball is dotted down once more. But a knock-on was called there, so no try. But that will be the end of this Group D fixture. So no final score for King's College Taunton, but a dominant performance from them. All the work was done on the floor. These uh, impressive counter-attacks is really what separated the two sides. With King's College Taunton two points down by the end of the first half. They've really turned it around. But don't go anywhere because we're back in pool, pool A in this next fixture. It's Pride Park College of Bath up against Bristol Grammar. A really exciting fixture. That's all from Whitchurch versus King College Taunton in Group D. But don't go anywhere because very shortly we'll be back with the second round of fixtures from Pool A. Thank you. 
Welcome back to pitch three of the Colston Sevens. This is the third game on our live stream so far. We're on to the second round of fixtures already. The rugby's coming thick and fast. On pitch three, it's Prior Park College from Bath up against Bristol Grammar. Both these teams have already played. Bristol Grammar against Christ College Brecon. Prior Park up against Queens. But this is the second round of fixtures in what is a tough group. The uh, three other pitches busting with life at Colston Sevens today. The uh, top sevens competition in the southwest of England. We've seen some excellent rugby so far. Uh, in the first two fixtures, Colston came out on top up against Abingdon with a confident win. And at King's College Taunton ran away with it towards the end against Whitchurch. But right now, it's Prior, Prior Park College from Bath. Great sporting pedigree in the sports of hockey and tennis, founded in 1830. They've had a mixed season uh, with a number of wins, but losses against teams in this competition, including Taunton, Colston School and QEH. Bristol Grammar had a successful season, beating QEH, but losing to uh, the host Colston and Clifton in the 15 season. So uh, two sides hoping for a really even fixture. As you've seen, the first half has been really even so far in this tournament. But it'll be Prior Park College to get us underway. It's a lovely nudge out into the wide channel, but claimed well by Bristol Grammar's number seven. Knock on advantage, so free ball for Bristol Grammar to play with as they retain possession from just inside their own half. And it's great footwork there from their number seven once more. So let's play through the midfield. And a high tackle there called, so Bristol Grammar will now have momentum as they tap quickly. Try Park on the back foot already so far. And it's excellent leg drive there, all the way up to uh, Cry Park College's 22. As Bristol Grammar will look to play it back inside. Very darting run there by the 15. He's been tipped off, but spilt. And now Pride Park looks to come away with the loose ball as they chip it through. But that ball is knocked on. And finally, first opening play comes to an end. One minute of flowing rugby so far. Bristol Grammar working the way all the way up to the 22 for a bit of loose play. Allow Pride Park to counter, but nothing came of it. And now Bristol Grammar will have a scrum just outside Pride Park College's 22, uh, 10 metres. Really promising position for Bristol Grammar to play from so early on. A side who would really love to get one over their uh, local rivals, Colson, in their own competition. Really high hopes for all the Bristol teams coming into this tournament today. It's a big fend on this near side. Bristol Grammar will come away with it. Quality of offload so far today has been exceptional, as you expect from a premium sevens tournament. And still Bristol Grammar come away with it on their halfway. Offload picked off there. And Prior Park College will come away with the ball for the first time in this fixture. As they're dragged down. 
But an extra roll there, not allowing the Bristol Grammar man to get over the ball. Part of the new rules, no longer allowed to roll on the floor if it disrupts the attempted turnover. And that's excellent footwork, excellent step by Bristol Grammar's number 12 as he just cuts his way through the Pride Park College defence. And that is the breakthrough that Bristol Grammar were after. They've had all the possession so far in the first two and a half minutes of this Group A fixture. And that is the opening score that Bristol Grammar were craving. Pride Park College just simply had not enough of the ball. The longer you defend for in the game of sevens, the more tired your legs will become. And from that quick turnover, some excellent footwork. Really quick thinking, as you'll often see in the game of sevens. Options were on out wide with this lovely step inside there, straight through the hole. And once you've got momentum going forward, there's no catching you. It's how crucial it is in the game of sevens. One missed tackle can lead to a score. And Bristol Grammar will get us back underway. One try to the good. And an opportunity to see what Pride Park can do as they break through the line early on. Quick response. Well, the team from Bath. Excellent footwork from the number eight. It's Bristol Grammar in a spin. And there could be space out wide here. Still possession for Pride Park College. A lovely little move there, lovely dummy line. Opens up some space. The ball's gone backwards there. Step inside. And that's turned over on the floor excellently well from Bristol Grammar. It's an exciting play there from Pride Park College, but Bristol Grammar will come away with it. And they've got numbers on this short side. They've played it through to the overlap. It's a foot race to the line, and that foot race will be won by Bristol Grammar's number 13. It's by some good play from Pride Park College there. Once again, from the turnover, within a phase, Bristol Grammar have gone over for their second try of the morning in this Group A fixture. Counter-attacks have been the story of the day so far. We saw how King's College Taunton ran away with their last fixture against Whitchurch from the counter. Excellent kick. We'll put BGS 12 points to the good. See, once again here, it's just penalty on the floor, an excellent turnover. And they take it down the short side, and suddenly it's a four on two there. And it's been picked off excellently well by Bristol Grammar. Okay, make sure. Make sure. Once again, Grammar will get us underway. Pride Park College have an opportunity to play. Some sporting pedigree in the game of rugby. Likes of Damien Cronin, Bath and Scottish International come through this school. High tackle there, some excellent run for the number eight, but he's off the mark. It's a slow ball for Pride Park College to play with. And they'll put it to the boot. A rare option in the game of sevens, and it hasn't been fine to touch. And now Bristol Grammar will look to play with it. Excellent footwork there by number 15. And a great offload as well as Bristol Grammar crash past the halfway line. Good footwork there by the number 11 once more. Testing stuff for the uh, Pride College defence. But that loose ball has been nudged through by the grammar number 14, but swept up by Pride Park College. But once again, the turnover on the floor has left Pride Park College in trouble. The crossfield kick picks off really well. And this looping, winding run, great footwork. And Bristol Grammar School will go over. Excellent creativity there from the Grammar School man to find that wide overlap with the kick through. And after that, Pride Park College were always scrambling. It's been clinical so far from Bristol Grammar School. There's been nothing wrong with uh, Pride Park College's performance so far. And they've had ball. They've been creative. But uh, it's on the floor. Too many penalties. He swept up really well there. But that penalty on the floor. Really quick, fast refereeing. A really high standard today. It's a lovely kick cross field. And with one man to beat, takes it inside, beats his second man, beats his third, and where's the tackle? Really excellent finish. And Bristol Grammar School get us underway once more. Well taken well by that number six. 
And great dummy as well. There was men out wide, but he's taken it in on his own, crashing over. To inside their 10 metre. But once again, the steal on the floor. And now Bristol Grammar have options out wide. One more pass should do it. And now the overlap once more. Prior Park College are scrambling. And two men cannot make the tap tackle required. And Bristol Grammar go over again. And that will be half time. And everything can change in the game of sevens, but Prior Park College have a mountain to climb in this second half. An excellent conversion, which puts Bristol Grammar School 24 points to the good in this opening pool, in this second pool A fixture of the day. Just another turnover on the floor and a counter attack with two men over. Prior Park College always scrambling, just couldn't get back to bring down that. Uh, Pacey man out wide for Bristol Grammar School. A difficult first half for Prior Park College. 24 points down. Coaches get the messages on board. And then we'll see how the uh, school from Bath can react to that comprehensive first seven minutes of sevens rugby. Clinical from Bristol Grammar School. Every turnover, they were within two phases of a score. But we'll see if things can change in this second half in the second round of fixtures in Group A at the Colson Sevens. We'll be back very shortly for the second half. It'll be Bristol Grammar School to get us underway for the second half of this Pool A fixture at the Colston Sevens. 24 points to the good. They'll be looking to close out the game with an excellent kick high into the channel there. Claimed really well by the Grammar man, spilt backwards. And uh, taken into touch there by a Prior Park College boy. And it'll be a line out for Bristol Grammar. Excellent kick. Tap back. Scramble on the floor for the ball there, but it's come Bristol Grammar's way, as things seem to have done in this fixture so far. They've been on top from the very first minute of this game. A quick line out. Executed well. Now Bristol Grammar will play with some ball out wide. It's gone backwards there after the spilt, but that will be a turnover. And now Prior Park College have some ball to play with. Ten more metres there after a disruptive Bristol Grammar play. And we'll see what Prior Park College can do with a really good platform to play from. We tipped wide once more. They've got a man overlap there. And Prior Park College come down the short side. The pass is back inside. And it will be a penalty in that wide channel after some uh, attempted defending from Bristol Grammar. It looks like a card will be coming out. The card is out, and Bristol Grammar will be playing with a man less for the next two minutes. And Pride Park College have a great opportunity and the man advantage as they go to the short side. But the man's been held up. Ball is released. And they pick and go onto the short side and score. And that'll be the opening try for Pride Park College in this fixture. It was well deserved after some great attacking play on this short side. And now with a man down, can Pride Park College change the tide in this fixture with momentum shifting their way? No extras added. Nice, Foster. 
We're still a full half in this fixture with uh, another minute or so with the man advantage to uh, regain some points, close the gap between Prior Park and Bristol Grammar. Three Prior Park College to get us underway. Give the, uh, the ball boy, mate, wait. You're going that way. It's claimed well by the Bristol Grammar man. The ball inside. They break a defender, and now it's back to the man who's playing the ball in the air. And it's a foot race to the line. And Bristol Grammar's number seven will saunter over for another try. It was great work from the kickoff. The ball inside, flooding the gap as is so important in sevens to keep the ball alive, always supporting the ball carrier, allowed a offload inside. Which will give Bristol Grammar the perfect response. Wind down the seconds as they look to uh, finish off this yellow card period. And it's a clean strike in conversion, but just wide to the right-hand side. And uh, Prior Park College will be disappointed with that. It's great footwork, a great ball inside between two defenders and then an excellent offload. And uh, the grammar man had the legs to beat his last defender and touch down as Bristol Grammar looked to get us underway once more. High scoring affair in this uh, pool A fixture. And we'll see what Prior Park College can deliver in the final three minutes. Taken well, just in outside of their 10 meters. And they've got ball to play with. A man overlap if they look to use it, as they will, down this far side. And the Prior Park College man looked to take on number 14 on the wide, but he couldn't do so. Pushed into touch, line out taken quickly, excellent footwork, and Rishal Grammar will stroll away to the line once more. Excellent step inside. Bristol Grammar had numbers up on the short side. And down the blind channel. Holding the defenders, Bristol Cram have gone over once more with a conversion. Excellent defensive work, but no rest. Straight up to play the ball wide. And this step inside, suddenly down the blind side, there are four players up. And uh, quick show and go, and the number 12 will go over for yet another try. Really dominant performance by Bristol Grammar. They've looked really dangerous so far, so clinical. And this time, Prior Park College will have the overlap. Dragged down just inside their halfway. But the attempted offload has not gone to plan. And once again, Grammar have turned it over as they look to counter. They've got numbers free on this right-hand side, but they play it back inside. And a tackle off the ball there will allow Grammar a quick tap. Number, four, number 21 there flicks it out the back. Another out the back there to free up the ball. A third out the back pass. And a switch inside. And some great footwork will allow Grammar to go over. What a fantastic try we've just seen. They've, got really, they've really got license to play after that dominant first half performance. And uh, the points are racking up. Now 51-5. Seven tries. Last minute, guys. Last minute. As we enter the final closing stage of this game, you see there's three out the back passes in a row there and a switch inside. Uh, some excellent footwork. No chance for the covering defender from Pry Park College. They've been on the uh, on the wrong end of a rather impressive performance from Bristol Grammar School, who have really laid down a marker so far in this tournament. They really do mean business on the home turf of their great rivals, Colston School. As we come into the last minute of play, Pry Park College have the ball once again in their 22, and once again they have an overlap. The dummy's been sold, and a second man's been beaten, and a third still going, the Priory College man. And they've got ball to play with inside the 10 metre. Inside Bristol Grammar's half, where they haven't been nearly often enough in this fixture. Not on the ball, it's on the body, not on the ball. And there's free space on this far side for Priory Park College to play with. An excellent tackle there by the Bristol Grammar man. Has dragged this Priory Park College side off the sideline. They've been soundly beaten by Bristol Grammar School. A clinical display. Every turnover was a score. And beyond that, there's very little that Pride Park College could have done. 
an excellent performance by Bristol's Grammar School, really laid down a marker in this tournament. Here are some highlights for you. It started off really well for Bristol Grammar from the tap penalty. All they needed was one opportunity, some excellent footwork by the number 12 to take it around their outside man. We've got a lot of tries in coming on this highlight reel, so strap in and prepare to watch some uh, fantastic sevens rugby. Once again, from a penalty, really clever work to take it down the, uh, the short side. They had four numbers up here, picked it off really well. It's just a uh, textbook sevens rugby, really exploiting the space, going quickly off the tap penalties, finding the holes, because there are always holes on a sevens pitch. Again, another turnover, another penalty. And from there, there are, see there are three Prior Park College boys on the floor. There's always going to be spaces somewhere. And there you have it. Excellent winding run to uh, take the ball over. Let you enjoy the last of these uh, Colson School tries. But uh, don't go anywhere, of course, because there's always fixtures to come here on pitch three. Up next, downside up against Taunton School, the second Taunton School to be on the pitch. This is the Pool C fixture, second round of Pool C fixtures, a group that also includes Kirkham Grammar and KES from Bath. Louis Taunton. We'll be back very shortly for the uh, next fixture at the uh, Colson Sevens. Next up, it's in Pool C, Taunton School against Downside. And we're underway here in this Pool C, second Pool C fixture. Want to claim the ball bound from the kickoff, but uh, downside are able to uh, force a knock on, and from this scrum they'll have a platform to play. Downside school from Stratton on the Foss in Radstock, lovely part of the country, but a really powerful Taunton scrum there has turned the ball over. Now Taunton will have ball to play with. <laughs> Penalty there for not rolling away. And a quick tap, some lovely footwork will allow Taunton School to come away with possession. They crash over onto the 22, really physical play so far, but the penalty on the floor will allow Downside some possession as they look to counter. Downside beats the one man, they've got numbers on this far side if they can use them. Excellent pace injected onto the ball by their number 10 as he steps inside. Still Downside ball, and they've got the overlap. And it's really excellent play from downside all the way from inside their own half. They've gone coast to coast to open the scoring. Small correction in my notes there, just checking the colours of the teams. It's all right. So it'll be Taunton who've opened the scoring. Taunton in blue, downside in the uh, yellow and red. Thank you very much to the always wonderful parents on the sideline helping me out with that one. But an excellent score from Taunton after a bright start by downside. They've gone coast to coast really excellently well there to uh, open the scoring in this fixture. So it'll be Taunton to get us underway having opened the scoring. No points added. But here we are in Pool C. Downside look to respond. They claim the kickoff well, but an excellent tackle. And Taunton a drive downside back into their 22. It's a loose ball at the base of the ruck. Downside come away with it. Excellent turn there by the downside man as he flicks it inside. And it's excellent running there. And downside break into Taunton's half. Excellent step back inside. And once again, this direct running from downside. But the flicked offload there hasn't gone to plan. And downside still come away with it. 
following some messy play there as uh, Taunton looked to clear. And how Taunton looked to run it out from inside their five metres. They've injected some pace really well into this early fixture. But despite being held, the Taunton man has regained his foot and now downside have an opportunity inside the 22. And there's no numbers in this wide channel for a downside to play with. And that is a turnover. The downside man didn't, look, uh, didn't seem to look where to go. And that's excellent contact there. And Taunton will stream away to score. It was really unlucky there. Downside did well to turn the ball over. Just outside Taunton's 22. But uh, as we've seen so often today from the counter-attack, really aggressive running from the uh, Taunton man. He broke his tackle. And any missed tackles can be crucial in the uh, game of sevens. It's a quick tap. Lovely ball out wide. And this really physical collision. Brushes off two men. Turns on the gas, and uh, you won't be pulled down from there as he saunters in for the second try for Taunton. We've seen some pretty heavy score lines so far today at the Colson Sevens, and uh, downside have got some work to do if they wish to avoid a little turn of excellent kick there by the Taunton man. As downside was set far too deep, but downside still come away with it following a uh, inability to gather by Taunton. Still downside, come away with it. Offside there from the uh, down Taunton man, who was still getting back to his feet. And now downside look to play with it. 12 points down. Four minutes into this opening uh, first half. Some good footwork and physical play there from the downside man. They are a big team. Downside, they really need to use their physical advantage. Excellent fend there as downside go crashing into Taunton's half. Really aggressive play there in the contact. This downside look to build a platform. And they go to the toe, but it's charged down well by Taunton. It will gather possession. Swept up there, just outside their 22. It's a messy play there from downside as they look to. It was a good idea, but uh, didn't go exactly to plan. And now Taunton will look to come away from it. They've counted so efficiently so far, and they've got another man on the outside here. Great footwork, excellent step to beat his first man. A lovely fend. But the flick has not gone to plan. It's gone straight up in the air and been gathered by the same man. That was a really impressive step. And now Taunton have got numbers on this far hand side. Great footwork once again to beat his first defender. And a lovely offload. And again, great footwork as the number seven goes steaming over for Taunton. There were some really great steps in there. They really put downside it downside in a spin. Really impressive try there from Taunton. They've looked on top form so far in this first half. Hello. In fact, very little downside could do from that. Uh, First turnover. Under a minute to go in this first half. And Torsten have really come away with it. Started here, this lovely footwork inside to beat his first defender. Stayed on his feet really well. Really great offload, and here's another step. Bang into his outside channel. Beats his defender. And the physical carry is not being brought down from there. And Torsten will get us underway once more. It's really aggressive tackling from the kickoff. And downside still come away with it as they look to clear. Ball's put to the toe. And uh, it's been kicked out there by a taunted man to end that first half as they're on the final play. So the first half comes to an end in this group C encounter. Really physical affair, some really excellent footwork, excellent handling from this Taunton school. Have really uh, put downside on the back foot in this Pool C encounter. So we go into the uh, second half with Taunton 19 points to the good. It'll be interesting to see if downside school have a comeback on their hands 
We'll be back very shortly for the start of the second half in this full scene counter here at the Colson Sevens. And we're back at the Colston Sevens for the second half of this Pool C fixture. The second round of fixtures in Pool C, Taunton School up against Downside. Taunton, 19 points to the good after a dominant first half display. Uh, Downside have shown glimpses of uh, really impressive play as they look to come down this short side and they have the overlap. And the offloaded side has been picked off by the Taunton man. And now they'll look to Cantor. They've got numbers up on this far side. Real injection of pace as we've seen so often in this first half from Taunton's number 10. As he's got the wheels on the far side to go down and score. And that is the perfect start for Taunton from this second half. Just as downside school looked to counter following a really impressive first half performance from Taunton. Taunton have picked up exactly where they left off in that first half. The score now 24 points to nil. Downside have been under some real pressure in this opening exchange. Of course, in sevens, you've always got to look to play. You've always got to look to find that offload that's going to put a man through. But uh, a bit too much too soon there. Picked off really well by Taunton's 14. And then it was simple hands. And this injection of pace really turns on the wheels. Really powerful acceleration on the outside. And a really excellent finish. That's exactly what Taunton will have. We're looking to start this first half as they will get the ball underway. Excellent kickoff there. Contested really well in the air. And Downside have run away with it. Just inside their 10 metre. Can Downside show that they have uh, more to offer in this fixture? Which has really gone all Taunton's way so far. That's an excellent shot there from the Taunton man. And it's been picked off in the ruck. Knocked on, however. Downside will have ball to play with. Twenty-six points to nil. Four tries up. Taunton are in this. Uh, Just come right up, lads. There's the mark. Cheers, boys. Oh, we'll see encounter. Okay, watch. Cross. Still five minutes to play. Five. Set. But uh, up next. No, straight out the side. Just come straight out the side. The scum has reset. Up next, we've got a really exciting fixture yeah, here yeah. on pitch Don't three. Look. You get the feed straight, okay? The biggest game of Cool B so far, Exeter School Bye. against the host, Colston. Yeah. Should be a really exciting encounter. The back to the action on screen now as Downside looked to come away with it. Really lovely short line. Tackle. And the Downside yeah, man, but it's been picked off once again by Taunton. They've turned it over, and they're number seven who goes out into the wide channels. Try. And it's another try for Taunton, their fifth of the fixture so far. It was a well-planned move from downside, but uh, once the man was brought down, it's really quick work on the floor from Taunton. The, uh, the difference between the uh, strongest sides we've seen so far today has been their work in the breakdown. And every penalty, every turnover, Taunton have managed to run away with it. They've scored off the first or second phase. Just of the uh, strongest sides of the day so far have managed to. And uh, that kick is short. Uh, we got three and a half points. But with three and a half minutes to go and 31 points to the good, Taunton will be feeling confident. See, it's a great line there by the downside man, but uh, no support with him. Easily picked off. And then just some simple hands after some 
Great running. Okay, yeah, we're Taunton man mate. is into the corner. So Taunton will get us underway once more. Excellent kick into the wide channel, okay. and this time Taunton have claimed it. Really great work off the toe there, and now Taunton look to play wide. It's great footwork, and now they've reloaded back as they look to go from sideline to sideline. An injection of pace through the midfield has found a hole, and now the number 13 will stroll in for yet another score. Oh, it was really excellent hands there to spread it all the way onto this uh, left-hand side for Taunton. And then a bit of footwork, playing it back across the line. And in the game of sevens, it's easy to find holes when you've got so much pitch to cover, especially Change when you've been on the back foot, this downside half. Yeah. Have just been beaten by the better side today. Taunton are a really quick, really powerful outfit, really well drilled, really strong in the breakdown, which has been the difference between sides so far today. And uh, although the conversion doesn't go to plan, 36 points to the good. Taunton have sealed it off. It's excellent footwork here to draw in those three defenders. And then as yeah. they go to play yeah. for the short side, the space out wide, but the hole's been spotted. It's a really good injection of pace, as we've seen across the day. Just wait for him to go, just wait. Just wait one sec. And yet another score okay. yep. for Taunton as the clock ticks down in this full C encounter. Six tries to the good, but claimed in the air by downside score. Lovely footwork and fend inside. An offload out the back, goes loose, but it's still downside ball. And a gap's been picked excellently well there, a downside man, a great chop tackle. And still downside ball as they uh, win that ruck. And lovely step inside there by downside number 16, and now it's a race to the line. He's got bodies on his back, but again, good footwork. He's put two men to the floor, and the foot dragged down just inside the five metre. And that is outstanding defending in the ruck by Taunton. And now they look to counter. There's only one man to beat. But the Taunton man is dragged down well. And now they look to counter. But it's been spilled. Advantage downside, but they'll play with it. The ball's out wide once more. Chipped through by the downside man, but it's gone dead. That was excellent work by the diminutive number 16 there. Really excellent footwork. Dropping men to the floor as he went, but uh, it's a shame he'll be leaving the field after that excellent bit of play. Now Taunton will have ball to play with. Following the uh, kick that went dead, it'll be Taunton's ball. 30 seconds left. 30 seconds left in this uh, second pool C fixture of the day. Crouch. Taunton have really laid down a marker here Five. with an excellent performance. Six. Really Wait physical, really dominant, really quick and with excellent work in the breakdown. That's been the difference between the two sides, really. Yeah, Taunton have come away with it. It's been spilled in the midfield there. Perhaps a lack of concentration considering the uh, score line. <laughs> But following the uh, clearance kick back from that knock-on, it's a penalty touchy. for downside, and perhaps as we uh, as we reach overtime, yeah, downside can finish okay. on a positive. Just stay on. Really good opportunity yeah. for downside school here to finish strongly. And it's a big fend there from downside man. It looks for the offload, but can't execute. But still downside ball. Good fend, bit of space, and there's numbers on this far side. Stop and go from the downside man as he beats his first defender, but he's wrapped up by a number of Taunton defenders. Tackle, release, release. No release from the tackle, it's another penalty. Quick tap from the downside man. You're on now. And he's dragged down well once again. No hands now. No. Ruck secured by downside, and taken from the base of the ruck. Tackles on the floor. Dragged down once again. Lost. Still downside ball as they pick and go, and they'll cross the line. OK, 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 one, one. Don't. A few harsh words exchanged between the downside and the uh, Taunton players. The referees look to uh, sort that out, but can't take away from the uh, excellent finish that downside have managed to carve out there. Sustained pressure, they've drawn the penalties, and uh, they've used their physicality well. But, unfortunately, too little, too late. That's time, boys. That's time. For Just on the downside. That's time. Final score yeah. in this fixture will be known following the conversion. Okay. 
corner. And uh, with the wind on his favourite, drops just short. And that will be the end of a comprehensive victory for Taunton School. Yeah, thanks, mate. They've been really impressive so uh, far yeah, in this I'll game. Just check. I think that's about right. Yeah. Really I'll impressive so far in this tournament. And the final score in this Group C fixture is 36-5 to Taunton School. Downside had the moments of good play. They had some uh, well-run moves, but uh, it was a work in the breakdown from Taunton, really. Turnovers leading to counter scores, which has been the most impressive part of their game, as has been the case for a number of fixtures so far today. So a comprehensive victory for Taunton in Pool C. But up next, we have perhaps the game of the day. The host, Colston, up against the ever-impressive Exeter School. Two schools of real rugby pedigree, and we'll be back very shortly for that pool A encounter. I'll leave you with the highlights of Taunton's excellent scores. We'll be back very shortly for our next fixture here at the Colston Sevens, brought to you by Next Gen 15. And we're back here on pitch three of the uh, Colston Sevens. Up next is a fascinating encounter between two of the strongest teams in this competition. The host, Colston, enjoyed a victory uh, last time on uh, pitch three. Up against Exeter School of real rugby and pedigree. It'll be the number nine, James, to get us underway here. It's claimed well from the kickoff by Rye. It's a really comprehensive win for Colston in their first fixture here. He's going through the captain, Pierce. Great footwork there by Pierce, taking him on the outside. And he breaks off one tackle, pushes off two, floats the ball inside. But it's been swept up by Exeter School. Physical tackle there by Pierce, who's been driven back there. And tackle now. As Exeter School look to uh, sweep up the ruck. And now they'll come away with it. Exeter control the ball in the midfield. Back really good seven set up, but it's spilt there. Yep. Tied it up well by Exeter as they look to play Tackle from inside their 22. And a turnover there the by the very impressive number 13, Milan Rye. Had an excellent first game, and now Colson, Colson School will counter well. And it'll be Nick Jamu, lightning quick with an excellent sidestep, all the way on that far right hand side to finish off well. Really, really impressive start from Colston. So physical in their defensive setup. And uh, story of the day so far from that turnover by Rye. Turn. It's been really impressive so far today. Quick tap, two boys out wide. And uh, it's Jamu to score. And open the scoring in this really important Group A encounter between Exeter and Colston. See again, another impressive tackle. Excellent turnover on the floor. And the quick thinking of Rye plays it wide to the uh, ever impressive Max Pullen. One more ball out wide. And a player as quick as Jarmo is going to be hard to stop from that far out. As Colson will get us underway. And we'll see if Exeter College can respond. A short kick there, but it's been gathered well by Exeter College. 
as they look to break down this midfield. And there is the uh, number eight Richards You're carrying well for the midfield and securing the ball at the ruck. Hands on in the ruck there. And now Richards will get it underway. Once again, X Exeter play through Fordham. A really good collision in the midfield there by Chamu. But it will still be Exeter ball. It's Fordham again. Through there, number 12, McIntosh. McIntosh still on the ball, tackled off the ball there. There's James. That's a cool carry. Once again there. Played wide there by Exeter. McIntosh out into this wide channel. But an excellent run inside there. And the offload to the number 15, Fordham. Fordham still on the ball there. Plays it wide. Now Exeter have got an overlap. The number nine steps inside. Still Exeter college ball as they look to build. Could be on in this far right hand side as they find the wide channels. Takes on Jamu and Jamu's been beaten. And despite an excellent attempt at a covering tackle, it'll be a try there for Exeter College. I believe the referee's called high tackle. And we might be seeing a card here for Colston as well to uh, double their frustration. The race was on into that far corner. But uh, doesn't seem like a card will be given from the referee. Fair contest in that far corner, but an equaliser for Exeter School. That'll be their uh, main takeaway. The attempted conversion is not clean. And it'll be Colston to respond. Good physicality as always from the uh, Exeter College boys. Exeter School boys, sorry. Um, and this is excellent, hands out wide. Quick fend to beat Jamu. And then the number 20 Otter on that far right hand side has finished it off. An international rower. Not a first 11 player this year, but he really excels in the game of sevens. And he's finished really well as Colson looked to respond. He was Jamu. He beats two men there. And he's still on the ball. Hits a gap and finally yeah, taken down. Not held. And the pass inside is picked off by an extra college man. You have to lift up. Okay, you have to lift up. But Lee's been through right there. He's put his hands on the ball, but within the new rules, you also need to lift from the base. And Fordham will get it underway for Exeter College. Great line there. It's chopped wide there to the number eight, Richards. And still Exeter School come away with it. And they've got an overlap once again on this far right hand side. And again, it's going to be a race to corner for Exeter College as they break through their first tackle. And now Exeter. School remain just five metres out. Okay. You were held at the end, okay? First the penalty you were, there you for a set attempt of second back. movement. And Colston will come away with it. Three lead. Cool, cool. Extra school there. Penalised just five metres out. So disappointing for them as the pool is played wide there to pull in. Fullen's got some real wheels on him, even as a front rower, and he's beating his next man. And now Jamu, who's got a race to the line. It's a tight race to the corner there for Colston School. <laughs> but Nick Jamu will go over for his second try of the day after some really excellent work there from Pullen. Exeter School so unlucky. From all the way in their five metres, Colston have come away with it. It was the captain, Paddy Pierce, first, who spinned out wide to the uh, front rower, Max Pullen. Really excellent work from him. Great offload to Nick Jamu. One minute. And Exeter have conceded their second try of the afternoon. Great attempt at the conversion there from Oli Lamb, but no love. And uh, it will remain 10-5 to Colston in what has been perhaps the most competitive fixture of the day so far. It's really great work out there from Pullen. He takes on his man. Beats two, draws two defenders in and finds the offload. Behind the kicker, please. And Colston School will get us underway once more. Okay. Lift it high there, but taken well by Exeter. And they'll look to play once more as they Jack crash for it up to their 10 metres. And it's another race out wide. Exeter love to play in this wide channel. 
And it's a lovely Not tackle long. from the last man, but Exeter still retain ball. It's been freed. And here's Fordham, who gathers it well on the floor. But a turnover there at the base will allow Colson to play with it, and they tap quickly. Here's Lee. Comes inside and beats his first man. Again, it's on Ryder through Chatterjee. Wide once more. Excellent footwork inside. Finally brought down. But the momentum is with Colson through Chatterjee. Excellent footwork to beat his first defender. Flick round the back there. Excellent work. And another out the back there. And finally, the man who's created all of Chatterjee on the ball again. Another offload. Absolutely exquisite work there from Chatterjee. Can you tackle that release? And it'll play nine now for Colston, who are just outside the five metre. They've got numbers out wide. It's a penalty advantage as well for them to play with. They spin it wide once more to pull in. It's a race to the corner, and Heath Willem will win and go over for Colston's third try of this fixture. Just some unbelievable play. Unbelievable play there from uh, Colston. <laughs> Really great work, and it'll be the uh, man who's had an excellent game so far. We'll come away with it once more. And it's 15 5 now. To Colston. And an excellent conversion all the way in the wide channel once more, which will be the difference in the closing stages of this first half. It'll be Colston 17, extra school 5, but it's been a significantly more competitive fixture. And the score I might suggest is with a penalty advantage in play. With it's right, simple that, hands, that there's space on the wide channel. And it's uh, the man at the moment pulling has had an excellent game so far. Who goes over for Colston? Exeter certainly still in this fixture after a really impressive first half. But it's Colston that will go into the break uh, ahead. We'll be back very shortly for the second half of this sevens fixture with the host 17-5 to the good in this pool A encounter. And we are back for the second half of this uh, pool lane encounter between Exeter and Colston. Colston, 17-5 to the good after an impressive end of the uh, first half. Following the kickoff, Colston will have an excellent platform to play from. And it will start with a scrum. The man to feed it, number 16, Rowan Chatterjee. Absolutely fantastic play towards the end of that first half. Really made Colston's tries. Now running at number nine, and his Lamb. A flick pass there from the uh, number 12, Thornton hasn't gone to plan, but still, the Lamb comes away with it. An attempt to turn over on the floor from Exeter, not successful. But it's been ripped in the tackle there. And now Exeter have a chance to come away with it. It's off the boot of the number 13. And it's Waggett with a race to the line. Waggett versus Chatterjee. And it's Waggett that will make it there first. A real utility player in the words of his coach. It's excellent play there from young Waggett. It was ripped in the tackle, one pass into the wide channel, and he put it to the boots, which has been so successful to certain size today. And that will be the perfect response for Exeter School early on in this second half of what is a really crucial fixture for the makeup of Group A. It'll be Collins with the attempted conversion, but just wide. 
A winger across 14s, 15s aside rugby and 7s. There's a lovely chick fit through there. Chatterjee's uh, no slouch at all, so it's really excellent play there. Waggett to pin the ears back and slide into touchdown. And Exeter well and truly still in this fixture. Seven points behind in the opening stages of the second half. It's excellent kick there as well. Fantastic nudge there from Exeter, who have retained possession. They've charged all the way up to just outside Colson's 22. The momentum really is with Exeter in the opening stages. It's a two on two out there. And Colson have recovered well, but it will still be Exeter ball. A penalty there. Hands in the ruck there. It's tapped quickly, but they've not gone back 10. And a, possibly a card here for an Exeter man. The referee has given a penalty try following that tap and go from the Exeter man. One. And it is unfortunately also a yellow card for Nathan Dix, who will have two minutes on the sideline. Seven points added for that uh, penalty try. You see it was a dart to the corner. So it's a penalty there for coming in at the side. Clever decision to go quickly. A dart for the corner. But uh, Nathan Dix not back 10 metres and he'll be in the bin for the next two minutes. Another outstanding kick from Exeter. And they've retained possession once more. And they play it out wide again. The last man makes the tackle does uh, Ollie Lamb. But an excellent attacking play. A few flicks, too many. And it's gone forwards in the offload there. But another kick that was gathered. The luck of the bounce, you could say. Uh, it's come back Exeter's way. And they've looked really dangerous at the start down, guys. of this uh, second half. Bit of confusion if the penalty try is five or seven points uh, today. Well, I'm sure that'll be um, cleared up. At the moment, teams Colson are two, two points to the good with a minute left on their yellow card. It's been really excellent play by uh, Exeter in the opening stage of the Crouch. second half. Really dominant. The momentum is certainly with them Set. as they look to gain the lead for the first time in this fixture. But it will be Colston Ball okay, from inside out. their 22, but brought down by uh, Exeter's number yeah, nine. Yeah. Yeah. Ball is free there on the far side by uh, Jamie Thornton. Thornton still with possession as he takes to the half time. It's tipped on there, and now Colson looks to play with it in these wide channels. Taken up the middle by Lamb. Great offload there. And it's the captain Pierce. And Ollie Lamb who throws the dummy and beats his second man. A massive fend there by Ollie Lamb as well as he breaks the tackle. And that is unbelievable play from Ollie Lamb. Really excellent score. Colston were driving up the field with dominant contact, great footwork, great fend. And Holly Lamb's just put yeah. four defenders to the floor by his own. It's beaten almost the entire Exeter team to complete that score. Really excellent play. Deceptively strong in the words of his coach. Regularly manages to break tackles throughout the season. Loves to tackle with the ball in hand. And we've seen plenty of evidence that there. Yeah, not time to restart. Look to convert his own score real asset to this Colston team. Excellent collection as well from the uh, conversion. Unlucky not to find the mark. But, yeah, yeah. And you'll see here, this is really fantastic play. Beats one man with the footwork and the offload. It's the captain Pierce who's involved. But he's straight back to his feet to take the ball. Sells one dummy, beats um, a man, beats another man with a step. Yeah, you're behind by... Ginormous Fen puts the man to the floor. And then breaks through the last two tackles to saunter home. And Exeter's fantastic start to this second half has been halted. And the kick on has been claimed as well by Colston. And now Colston School will have a chance to come away with it through the captain Pierce. Here's Thornton. Another big fend. But a slip on this uh, well worn pitch today. But still Colston Ball. Through there, number 15, Harry Lee. And now through Chatterjee. Roll red! <laughs> Bit of contact there. We'll get, use it. Lee will spread it wide through the try scorer Lamb. Here's Dix back on the field following a suspension with a tip inside to Thornton with lovely footwork. Backwards. But that pass has gone loose, cleared up by Lee. Excellent footwork and play by Chachi with a lovely offload as well. And the man with the yellow card Dix that's go through, final offload. <laughs> 
and Thornton will go over for this consolatory score for Colston. And now, following some really excellent play from Exeter, really excellent fight back, it's now a 10 point game. And with not long to go in this fixture, time called by the referee, that will be it. Again, you just saw the wonderful footwork from a really impressive player, Rohan Chatterjee. He's had a fantastic game so far today. <coughs> and that will be the end of it. A turning point in this tournament, perhaps, for Colston, who have put away their hardest challenges so far. It's an excellent try. Dummies the kick, beats his man. Thornton's been excellent so far today. It's a shame that the man uh, back on from the bench couldn't finish, but uh, he's chucked an excellent offload in. Thornton will go over for yet another try. Really high scoring player so far today. Jamie Thornton, real asset to this Colston team. And to fight Exeter's best you. efforts, it's the hosts who go charging on. Really important game for the outcome of this afternoon. And it's ended Colston's way. Still a lot more to come on this live stream today. Up next, we've got the final round of group fixtures on Group 3. Kings versus... QEH, not one to miss. We'll be back very shortly for that closing pool fixture. So once again, we'll be back very shortly for the uh, final game of Pool D, QEH versus King's College Taunton. Introducing Next Gen 15, the new home school up. Well, where does this come from? Covering everything the school game has to offer in both the north and southern hemispheres. Oh, that's a great tackle! Oh. It's not good enough. One, two, skip a few and with the wheels. Highlighting tomorrow's stars, Next Gen 15 will be bringing you live games and regular updates of all the news and in-depth views on the global game. What a kick! All your school rugby, all in one place. This is Next Gen 50. We are back at the Colston Sevens, the premium Sevens tournament in the south, south west of England. Here are the final group games we live stream today before the, uh, the juicier parts of the afternoon, the uh, cup and plate competition. Up next, we have the final game from Pool D. On the other pitch in Pool D, it's Kingswood up against Whitchurch. Pool C, you've got KES and Downside, Kirkham and Torton. Kirkham, of course, team to watch out for. Bit of rock, paper, scissors between the captains today. Queen Elizabeth Hospice School up against King's College, Taunton. King's College really impressive in their last fixture. And it's another Bristolian team. Really good afternoon so far for the Bristolian teams. Bristol Grammar and Colson have gone really well. And it's the uh, other than Clifton, it's the final of uh, Bristol sides. We're up against King's College Taunton today. King's College really impressive in their first game. Really ran away with it against Whitchurch towards the end of that fixture. Great work on the breakdown. That was really the deciding factor between the two teams. We say if QEH can uh, work a bit harder on the floor. Right. And it's been claimed really well by uh, King's College, who from a really fast start as he looked to hunt down this near side. They've got numbers up, really well held by the number 12 in the far channel. And a great offload inside, another great offload. The handling from King's College, excellent in this opening stage. But a turnover by QEH on the floor has rescued their side. And another 10 metres for a bit of back chat to the referee. And QEH will tap and go. When the time is right for the referee. They come down the short side. 
and they put it to the boot, but it's been charged down, and the ball will sit up on the try line, and the chase is on, and it'll be King's College Taunton who go over. Perfectly reasonable idea from QEH. Clear the ball downfield. There's been a lot of love from the boot, but a really excellent charge down by King's College Taunton's number one, who has been perhaps their most important player so far today. Really hard working to charge that ball down and to chase it on to finish. That ball sat up really nicely for the uh, King's College man, just nestled in that far corner. And uh, the perfect start for King College Taunton in what is a really important group game. But uh, perhaps QH a little bit unlucky so far. And it'll be King's College to get us underway once more. Again, the right option, but uh, not executed properly. And just see how that ball sits up perfectly for the finish. Really excellent work from King's College. And it'll be the try scorer to get us underway. But this time claimed cleanly by QEH. As they look to go wide, but it's been spilled in the midfield. And now inside their 22, QEH are on the back foot once again. No advances, ripped in the tackle excellently well. But a really good platform for King's College to double their advantage once more. Final group game, so important as we uh, look ahead to the afternoon and some cup rugby. Which we're very excited to show you here on Next Gen 15. You can go either side, it's your choice. It's your choice. And that'll be uh, Coach. King's College Sorry. Taunton with the feed of this scrum. Clean ball for them. But excellent work there by the uh, diminutive QEH number nine who hacks the ball through. Come back. But uh, number nine for QEH called offside from the knock on, so it will be. A platform for QEH this time to work from. Bristol is a city blessed with a number of excellent schools. Clifton, Colston's, QEH and the Grammar. QEH perhaps the most pitch picturesque, do I dare say, with their excellent grounds right in the centre of the city. They've got a real job on to face uh, to turn it around against what is a really impressive King's College team. And the ball is loose, but uh, QEH number 11 beats his man on the outside as they go to the boot once more. And it's been gathered too, and he's completely on his own. Really excellent footwork in the backfield, cleaning up the mistake. A loose pass, great footwork onto the outside. Straight away, please. And QEH will equalise with a really excellent solo score. Perfect chip through, bounced up exactly as he wanted it to. And those two points will put QEH in front for the first time in this fixture. Pass just not going to hand, but it didn't phase the man. Lovely footwork off the base. To beat them on the outside, excellent decision to side foot it through. And it popped up just as needed. Excellent support play as well from QEH, really flooding the gate. So important to keeping the ball alive in this sevens format. And now QEH will get us underway. Their first appearance on the Next Gen live stream. Claimed well by King's College. Really excellent defence as well from QEH. The hands on the floor there. We'll give King's College a platform to build from as they look to respond. With uh, two and a half minutes left to this uh, opening half. That's an excellent shot in the midfield by the QEH man and could work on the floor too, but King's College retained possession. Got a man over on this outside, and they will use him. And it's a foot race now to the corner. Inside ball. And no tap tackle will stop him. And straight away, the perfect response for King's College Taunton. Really excellent play from that number two, number 12 combination. They found the space on the outside. Drew in his QEH man really well. And found the inside pass. And a bit of pace required to finish off. But uh, King's College, with a successful conversion, have once again regained the lead. Real back and forth fixture, QEH have shown some real impressive signs. So I certainly believe they can get back into this game. But yeah, this is a lovely pass inside, drew his man really well. And uh, under pressure, excellent pace from the number two to finish strongly. And once again, 
King Scholars Taunton will get us underway. Just over a minute left as that ball is hung high into the Bristol sky and claimed excellently well by the man who set up King Tolledge's last try there, number 12. And a penalty as well, off the mark from King's College. They won't be running straight away with it. But another excellent platform for King's College to extend their advantage as they look to play on the far side. One more ball, but an excellent step inside. We'll wrap up the King's College man. The ball to play with as QEH look under pressure from the defence, but it's been knocked on. And now QEH will run away with it. High tackle. No, ball down. Always high, high tackle. Black one. And that is a tackle too high for the referee to let go unpunished. Certainly. And QEH, for the remainder of the half, will have the man advantage. Really important player for King's College to lose as well. Yep, when you're ready. Really great talent, that number one. Nice but uh, they will have to deal without him for the remainder of this half and the beginning of the next. Let's see if before the break, QEH can use this one-man advantage well. There's a good bit of footwork by QEH number 12 and a good fend, makes some good ground. Don't use your hand, you're in a Thank you, well done. QEH ball, they've got an overlap, step inside. The offload picked up excellently well from the feet. And now QEH have momentum. And the number 15 still going, finds that final pass. And QEH will go over for their second try of this crucial pool encounter. Really excellent footwork there in the midfield from QEH's number 16. Number 15 found some space and there's that final offload that was needed. Really excellent pass out wide to number seven. An unsuccessful conversion. We'll leave the scores level as we go into the break the after this first half. So you just see some really excellent play, really footwork, great step inside. Offload didn't go to hand, but that's an excellent pick up. And as he draws in defenders, draws in more and more defenders, that one pass there, excellent ball out wide. And that will tie things up as we go into the close of this first half in our final round of pool fixtures ahead of a tantalizing afternoon of knockout rugby. We'll be back very shortly for the second half of what is a fascinating encounter between QEH Bristol and King's College Taunton. Well, four tries in a thrilling first half of rugby here at the Colson Sevens between King's College and QEH. Excellent shot in the midfield there from QEH as uh, King's College looks to get the ball underway. But a spill in that midfield following that excellent tackle as the QEH number 17 is still with it as he plays wide. And now QEH from the kickoff have got a really encouraging position inside King's College's half. There's a man overlap out wide there. But uh, good contact in the tackles, loosen not the ball, ball up, and King's College not come away with it. King's College not had all the love against Bristol teams so far this season, the regular season, back losses back to back Clifton back. and Bristol Grammar. They'll be looking to avoid another loss to a Bristol side in QEH. 
Backward, forward. But it's gone forwards there from a King's College man and he's let the pool run. Kick dead. But it's been kicked right. dead. Goal, 22 scrum. Sorry, scrum, 22 option. Kick dead by goal, 22 scrum option. So there's a knock on there by a King's College man after sweeping up the ball. But uh, in an attempt to beat his defender, a QH man has kicked it dead, thereby losing his advantage. And two options scrum or 22 dropout. And there's a sub, guys, there's two bodies. The scrum's been chosen. The yellow card is over for King's College. They'll be restored to their full lineup, which is good news for all those involved. And from this 22, QEH will look to counter on the home turf of their fierce rivals, Colston School. And it's claimed well by the QEH man. And it goes to the boot as well. No one in the backfield for King's College to contend with. But the ball bounce kindly for King's College Taunton. And now they'll come away with it. Just inside their own 10 metre. Bit of footwork for the nines wrapped up. And now they've got the man advantage in the wide channel. One more pass should put the number 12 away. Had an excellent first half, number 12, King's College, and he's beat the last defender. QEH man was called in two minds there. And a uh, really quick number 10, as he was scrambling back, has managed to beat him. And that is the breakthrough King's College were looking for at the start of this second half, as they take the lead in what has been one of the fiercely contested games of the tournament so far. Most certainly one of the closest score lines. And the extras have been added. See, it's really excellent play, just to play wide. QEH looking for that um, high line, trying to stop the ball from getting out wide. But once it's here, it's just too quick to contend with. Number 13 doesn't know if he's going inside or outside. Chooses the inside line, and he's dotted down for the third try for King College in this fixture. And they'll be getting the ball underway once more. And that kick's not gone to plan, so it'll be a free kick for QEH, the perfect platform for them to build from early on in this uh, second half. Still four minutes to go, plenty of time for QEH to uh, come back. It's a great running line there, for QEH number three. Loose offload, but swept up by the 13. And the short line was on there, but here is a two on two, a big fend. Number 12 has been wrapped up. But he was held in the tackle and then got to his feet without releasing the ball, so it'll be a penalty. And away go King's College once more as they look to kill off this game. Good offload in the tackle there. But an attemptive, an attempted interception there. Ball goes straight down, deliberate knock. As attemptedly as a, as potentially stopped a try scoring opportunity. So for the next two minutes, QEH will be playing with a man down, just as King's College did for periods of that first half. Time, off. Time is off for QEH laces. No chance of slowing down the yellow card there, I'm afraid. And soon enough, King's College will get us underway. Excellent attacking platform from just inside QEH's 10 metre. There's lots for QEH to do. But now with the man down, it's a real mountain to climb to claw back this five-point de deposit. Really powerful direct running there from the number five. But a great tackle means the offload has gone loose. And good QEH defence, exactly what they needed. Wasted opportunity for King's College perhaps, but uh, they retain the advantage in this final group game of the afternoon. A few changes in the King's College lineup to contend with as the clock kicks by. Just over a minute left on QEH's yellow card. But a penalty at the scrum there. Very rare to see in the game of sevens, but it's allowed QEH to exit. Some great footwork there as well by the QEH man. Leave him now, seven, leave it, leave it. Seven, stop, seven, stop. Thank you. Attempted nudge through there has not been successful. And King's College end up with the ball. And there's plenty of numbers on out wide if King's College can spread it. Certainly is an overlap if they can find it. They have found the outside man. And he cuts back infield. Still the ball is free though. Number seven spots a bit of space. 
too much pace for the two QEH defenders to deal with and that one-man advantage that King's College have has been crucial in finding these holes. And with under a minute and a half to go now, perhaps King College see the job as done. The, the man advantage will be ended after this kick, which is unsuccessful. So it's a 12-point game now with QES having just a minute and a half left to claw something back. So it's good direct running here from the inside wing. Brushes off a tackle. And then there's too much space between those two defenders, but with lots of, lots of men to cover out wide. How many, please, Colston? He's off. And now QEH have a mountain to climb with a minute to go. But we'll see if they can end on a positive. King College Taunton look really impressive so far today. Kickoff claimed by King's College. As they look to spread it wide. Great footwork. Great step inside by uh, King's College's number seven. Tackle it, go! Safe ball from the scrum. And they've come back the other way. It's a good high press from KEH as long as they don't miss their tackles. But the offload's been made there in the contact. And still KEH seems to be on the back foot despite their um, high line. And there's a ball out wide there, excellently taken by the number 11. It's a foot race to the line that King's College Taunton will win. Thanks, Andy. And King's College Taunton, as we've seen previously today, have run away with it as the fixture runs down. Despite QEH's best efforts to uh, turn a side over on hostile ground here at Colston Schools, big rivals for them today, lots of Bristol schools hoping to succeed in their home tournament, but as the kick goes wide, it's King's College Taunton who have been ruthless again and have scored another 29 points on our live stream today. And that will conclude our coverage of the group stage of this tournament, the Colston Rugby Sevens, but there's plenty to play for in the afternoon. Next round of fixtures kick off in just an hour. That's all we have for you from the group stages. 1.30 is the next kickoff for the trophy semi-final and bowl semi-final one and two at 1.30. Following that at 1.50, it's the plate and cup semi-finals. 2.10 trophy final and bowl final, 2.30 plate final, and 2.50 is the cup final. So lots of rugby for every team involved. We'll be back very shortly for more coverage of the Colston Rugby Sevens with kickoff at half past one.
Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Colston Sevens, the premium sevens tournament in the southwest of England, brought to you by NextGen. I'm Wilfred Kemsley, back for an afternoon of knockout rugby. There are four competitions yet to play today at the Colston Sevens, the Cup, Plate, Bowl and Trophy. On pitch three, right now in front of your eyes, we have Priory Park and Moncton, both from Bath, in the Bowl semi-final. The other bowl semi-final, KES against Whitchurch and the Bath team. The chance of a Bath all-final is still on. And in the trophy, it's Queens, Exeter, Downside and Kingswood all competing in their respective semi-finals against each other. Priory Park School, of course, finishing behind Bristol Grammar and Abingdon. Both teams who have been on the live stream today looking dangerous. And Moncton came out of a tough group with Colston School. So it's Pride Park to get us underway for the first semi-final of the day. This being in the third strung bowl competition. Plenty still to play for for every team. And that's a knock on there early on from Moncton, which will give Pride Park the opportunity. Seven. Just inside the 22. Both of these sides from Bath, of course. A lot of tension there. Plenty of schools from Bristol and Bath, really good representation from both cities today. And it'll be Pryor Park with a feed. And Pryor Park arrived with the loop and there's a man on the outside there, excellent move. And the number eight for Pryor Park has the gas to find the corner and he does. An excellent move run there from the base of the scrum. Haven't seen too many set plays come off as well as that today. And that is the dream start in this all bath semi-final every competition matters today at this uh, fantastic sevens tournament and both of these sides will be hoping to walk away with silverware but it's prior park who have gotten us underway with the scoring and a clean strike from the conversion but drifting just off to the right hand side and it'll be Pryor Park to get us underway once again. Here's a lovely move. Really clean from the base of the scrum. Really good hands there with a dummy runner. And then held up really well with that loop. Draws in three players. And then it's a foot race to the corner. And a foot race won by Pryor Park. We'll see how Moncton can respond. And this time the kickoff is clean. Moncton ball. As they look to play on this far right hand side. They bring it back to the midfield. Really good patient play on Moncton. Now they look to break. Advantage for a high tackle. And the number three slip the tackle once more. There's an offload away. And this could be the perfect response for Moncton. Still with penalty advantage. Number three shrugged off another tackle. tackle. Really impressive. For, strong carrying there. And that pass hasn't gone to hand. The ball is still alive. Backwards. Knocked backwards. By Pride Park man. Okay, nothing coming. Initially backwards, we'll knock on from red. So that offload Lovely. not going to hand there, but really great attacking play from Moncton. Showing they're well and truly in this fixture, despite going behind early on. As we said, there's plenty of rugby happening at the moment. With KES, another team from Bath. Up against Whitchurch at the moment. Ready. Crouch. Fine. But here on Set. screen, Pryor Park right have the opportunity to exit from just inside their 22. And that hole's been found by the uh, Pryor Park try store really well there. And there's an overlap on the outside, but the number 10 will go himself and he'll find that wide channel. One man to beat. He fends him off with a strong left hand. And Pryor have doubled their advantage inside the first half of this first half of this semi-final. In the crucial stages, the knockout rugby of this tournament. Really excellent try. Exploited the wide channel really well. 
Really strong left-handed Fend from the diminutive number 11 on that far side. Great pace to finish. And with the extras added, Brago 12 points up in this all-bath semi-final. So it's a lovely dummy there. Really did really well to get the ball away under pressure with one man to beat. Excellent play. And Mungford now have a mountain to climb inside this first half as Pry get that underway yet again. And it's claimed well in the air by Mungford. Strong tackle on a Pry Park man. And it's Mungford's most talented player so far, shrugging off another player out the back door, puts number five through a hole. Another offload, shrugs off yet another tackle. Mungford now have momentum and ball to play with, tipped off to the number 20. And it's great footwork to beat his last man. And this is the response that Monkford are after. Straight from kickoff, from inside their own 10 metre, they barnstormed their way all the way past the Pryor Park line. That's a great response. Great finish, straight under the posts. You'd hope the extras could be added here. And there's uh, Monkford's key man attempt to slot them. And he slams the crossbar, leaving it shaking, but no points added on. It's really great work just to hold the ball up here and find a really powerful dynamic runner. Beats his first man. Good footwork from the big man. A solid fend. Beats off another defender. And the momentum swings. A minute and a half to play, guys. A minute and a half left for Monkford to tie things up as we head into the end of the first half. It's a deep kick. Gathered well. Tackle. And dragged down Fine. by Monkford. Far Park still retain possession. Big fend from the number 11 as he prances wide. Still going. And now Prior Park recycle possession. And it's gone to the boot. It looks like Monkford should gather and do. And now they have a chance to counter. Large shot and a big offend put on by Monkford's towering number 20. Still going, shrugs off four, five defenders and gets the ball away. But it's spilt. No advantage coming. And Pryor Park have escaped. Really powerful, dynamic running. Really physical team Monkford have proven to be so far, using their physicality to the advantage. And we'll restart with 30 seconds left of this first half oh, with a Pryor Park strummage. Yeah. Some really powerful shots on. From some powerful dynamic runners in this first half. It's been a really physical game, one of the most physical games of the tournament so far. Okay. With very little to split the two sides. Crouch. Fine. Set. Balls available. And Pryor Park come away with it. It's good footwork to beat his first man. It's a number eight. Try scorer for Pryor Park. The opening try puts it to the boot. And there's no man behind as the ball sits up and it's gathered really well by the Pryor Park number eight. But number five is offside as the tackle was made. And as we clock into overtime, Pryor Park have an opportunity. Although the kick for touch does not find its target. And the ball is in the red, but Mungford will respond. And the ball is chipped through. It's a one-man chase. And if number eight beats the kicker and he skinned his second man, Mungford still have the ball. Powerful contact. And a turnover. And as we clock into our first minute of overtime, Mungford still wish to play with the ball. Held up well, and now there's an overlap for Monkford. And it's spilled on this near side with space to go, but that will be the end of the first half in this really physical all-bath semi-final here at the Colston Sevens in the bowl competition. That will bring the first half of this fixture to an end. Plenty to play for in the second half, just seven points splitting both Bath schools, Pryor Park and Moncton. Really impressive physical play from both sides in this first half. We'll be back very shortly to talk you through the second half here at the Colton Sevens with Next Gen 15.
And we are back for the second half of this bowl semi-final between Pryor Park and Moncton. The first of two semi-finals, KES and Whitchurch competing on the other pitch. But at the moment, it's Pryor Park with a seven-point advantage and Moncton to get us underway. And it's almost taken excellently well on that far side by Moncton, but unfortunately the ball is knocked on and Pryor Park have escaped. And it'll be a scrummage for Pryor Park. The scrum was a great platform for them in the first half, scoring off an excellent set piece. And they'll be hoping for more of the same from just outside their 22. And it is another set piece move, which has landed the ball in the midfield. And now Pryor Park come away with it. Move there, Pacey number 11, who's fended off one man. And he's beaten a second defender as well as they play the ball back inside. Short line by Park's number 12. And the dummy line there is that the number line on the outside. As he cuts back inside, didn't choose to take his man on the outside. And it's a turnover on the floor from Moncton as they look to counter. There's a real opportunity there for Pride Park, but now Moncton come away with it. And they have advantage for that. High tackle, Moncton still retain possession. They make so many metres with their carries to Moncton, this physical side. It beats one man, they offload over the top. Bit of space to run into for the number seven, but he cuts inside. Good footwork to beat a number of defenders. But the ball is loose and swept up by Pryor Park, and now they come away with it once more. End-to-end -end stuff so far, but now there's a man on the outside for Pryor Park. Really frantic rugby. The proper man beats his first two defenders, puts the number 12 through the hole, and he's got the gas, dragged down by the physical number 20, but no turnover. And now it's a two on one. Dummy sold by the number one, he cuts inside, and he'll dock down for Pryor Park's third try of this semi final. Taking his time there to get us some rest before putting the ball down. Really exhausting series of play there for both sides. Prime Park working all the way into Moncton's half before the turnover. Before another turnover by Prime Park led to a really well put together counter attack. And it only took them a few phases to find the gaps. This is where the overlap's exploited from here with a split decision for the number eight. And there was a slight delay uh, as the players come on pitch, so there's an injury down on the field on this near side Hello. to a Moncton player. And although injuries are something that we always wish to avoid in the game of rugby, uh, that we are really lucky to be sponsored by our medical partners, Return to Play the leading sports medical providers in schools up and down the country. Their groundbreaking work eases the burden on schools and helps protect and care for pupils. Specialising particularly in head injuries, they're making a huge difference in an area that is vital not just to schoolboy rugby, but to rugby in general. So we're really happy that Return to Play can help sponsor Next Gen's work as we try and bring schoolboy rugby uh, to you live. It's a really important part of the game. While we have a moment, we'll uh, mention another of our sponsors, Coach Logic, our analytical partners. We focus on player-led analysis and a space for player engagement where you can uh, clip up your games, do analysis and create highlight packages. All of our footage will be available through Coach Logic. As the game looks to be getting underway, as the pitch is cleared. The rupture of a pause for the injured Monkford man as the changes have been made. Four minutes left in this semi-final for Monkford to uh, try and get themselves back into this game. The game of sevens always moves so quickly, but there's always opportunities. We've seen how uh, 
in short periods of time in previous games. Points can pile on for momentum swings, and that's exactly what Mugford will be hoping for as we restart with a Prior Park kickoff. And Prior Park will get us underway. Chipped deep into that back corner. As the Monkford man looks to take on a few defenders. Great footwork to beat his first couple of players. And he's still going. Can't be dragged down. Can the Monkford number 20? And he's beaten four or five players now. It's a race to the corner. And Monkford will score. And that is exactly the response that Monkford required. All the way from kickoff. A really excellent solo try. The Monkford number 20 taking on his man. He's got footwork, the fend, and then when it was required, he had the pace to finish in the corner. Really crucial conversion now for Monkford, who remain nine points behind in this semi-final with three minutes to play. It's a clean strike. And an outstanding drop kick conversion all the way on that far channel is exactly what Monkford are after. And suddenly, it's only a seven-point game. It's really excellent work just when they think it's wrapped. And it's a line-out ball that's fallen Prior Park's way as they look to come away with it from inside their own 22. And they've taken it back to the short side. And now they take Truckett through the centre as that ball is offloaded, but it's fallen loose to the Monkford number seven, who's got two players to beat, and he will beat them both. Unfortunate play from Prior Park. Spinning it across the line, back and forth inside their own 22. And when you play like that in a game of sevens, when the smallest of mistakes can be punished so severely, it's always a possibility that one knock-on can lead to a really crucial try. And that conversion that's so crucial has been missed. But it's a two-point game. The uh, Pride Park looking for an exit, looking for a bit of space. I think they found it. But one loose offload, one knock-on. It's really well gathered by the number seven. He uses good footwork to get over. But Pryor Park still in possession and still two points ahead in this semi-final. But Mungford are hunting as they've wrapped up Pryor Park in the 22. This next try is so crucial to both sides here. As Pryor Park look to see out the last 30 seconds of this game, two points ahead. The number 11 looks to take on his man. And still Pryor Park maintain possession. Two points ahead. But he's wrapped up by a Monkford defender. But the penalty has gone Pryor Park's way. No release from the tackler from Monkford. And with only seconds left of this semi-final, the next decisions from Pryor Park will be crucial as they look to retain, retain possession once more. Still only two points ahead, following a conversion from Monkford that struck the crossbar, another one from in front of the post that couldn't be converted. Pryor Park still have the ball here through their diminutive number seven. As they've made it up to the halfway. They're in no need to score here, Pryor Park, but they still like to retain possession. The number 11 with good footwork is fending in and beating his first man. But the Monkford defender looks to steal the ball. Still Pryor Park's way as they've cracked the 10 metre. They've made plenty of ground here, Pryor Park. And that ball is loose but gathered by the number 10 and great footwork to beat his first man and to free up the pass. 
And now there's a two on one out wide. As it's shipped to their number 11, he brings it inside. Forward pass, but it won't be enough for Monkford. As the final whistle goes in this semi-final. And it's Prior Park after a really tight affair that's really gone down to the wire here with Monkford Coombe so close to their this ultimate comeback dragged made it a two point game towards the final stages <laughs> but I believe the referees are having a decision full time has been called by the referee uh, but we'll wait one moment to see if anything comes of this discussion but no whatever was discussed has been cleared up by the officials. And then this bowl competition, this all bath semi-final, it's Prior Park who we're heading through to play either KES or Whitchurch. We could have an all bath final in the bowl. We were just awaiting the results of that previous fixture. But after a really close affair here on pitch three at the Colston Sevens, it's Prior Park who we threw to the bowl final. Up next, of course, we have the cup competition on pitch three. The host, Colson, up against Christ, Christ, Christ Church Brecon. Don't go anywhere, we're back very shortly for our first cup semi final. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Colston Sevens, the premium sevens competition in the southwest of England. I'm Wilfred Kemsley with Next Gen, and here is our first semi final. The other semi final taking place on pitch two is, ta is an all Taunton affair. But here we have Christ College Brecon and Colston School, the host. I'm also joined today by the head of Colston School, Mr. McCulloch. It's absolutely a pleasure to have you on the mic with us today. Back with Boy Colston's player. Colston! 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 Tackle, away. Really keen to come away Christ, from this semi-final. Knocked out in the semi-final stage the this time ball. last year. Should be with us now, Mr. McCulloch. Lovely to have you. Hi, Wilf. It's great to be here. As I was trying to say, we've been getting some great reports on your commentary uh, from the people watching at home. So thank you very much for bringing this all to life for us. And it's an excellent nudge there from young Ollie Lamb, who's had a fantastic tournament so far to put Colson in a great position. Really excellent tournament, the uh, Colson Sevens. Uh, it's really great to have it back after a COVID-affected few years. Yeah, we've we've had uh, obviously the COVID layoffs, and we've had some really dreadful weather in past years again. So it, this is fantastic. Our grounds, and if we just say Adam Young's just done a superb job on the pitches, um, the quality of the rugby uh, I think is down no small part to the surface they're playing on. So Adam and his team have done a brilliant job for us. 
played on this ground myself before, and it is this pitch especially is excellent quality. Tackle as, release, uh, hands away. Christ College wrap up the Colston man, but it's away from Lamb, from Lamb, and the forward Just pass there. Of course, forward. the first turnover of the Just afternoon, Christ going Christ College's way. It's been a really successful day so far. Some really talented players on show, uh, like the skipper, of course, Paddy Pierce. He's had a fantastic day, as well as Jamie Thornton. He's uh, Colston's top Correct. scorer so far. Yeah, the boys have Find been uh, playing some great rugby. Uh, I think uh, these guys from Christ Brecon are going to be a really, uh, really tough opposition today. Uh, but we'll try and play some good sevens, and uh, we we'll hope for a, a good fun to be had by all. Ripped in the contact there, but no release from the tackle. Paddy Pierce looks to go quick, but he's off the mark. Really tight affair so far. Christ College going for a really difficult group to make it so far in this cup competition. But uh, Colston's the home side. I think that has an impact on the uh, way the team perform. I hope they will uh, be wanting to do themselves proud in this uh, environment, yeah, playing on their first 15 pitch. Uh, We've had a really good season. Lots of boys representing the Bristol Bears under 18s who've done so well winning the, well the boys, National boys, League title. Uh, and Hold I'm the sure they'll want to do themselves justice today. Captain number six, Paddy Pierce, one of those, along with Hold Max Pullen, who's had an excellent Hold tournament, Hold especially Hold as a front row. It's great yeah. to see uh, someone from the front row union, just like myself, representing at sevens. Well, uh, we, we probably would have been playing Jimmy Halliwell if he wasn't away with the England under 18s playing in France this weekend. Uh, not perhaps his natural game, but he's got great hands and he's a very mobile chap for a big boy. Uh, so we're missing him, but these guys are playing really well, so we're, we're excited to see how far they can go. And despite it being um, Christ College ball, Colson have worked their way up into their 22. Powerful scrum last time, and another dominant scrum this time, but uh, Christ College come away with it. A lovely looping move, and it's been put to the shoe. But now it'll be Colston ball to play with. As Lamb shows the ball with a big fend. Here's Rye. And an excellent shot in the midfield on Thornton, who's battling well. Jamie Thornton, one of the strongest, uh, most committed rugby players you're ever likely to see. And that ball from the skipper Pierce has gone loose. And some excellent defensive plays from Christ College Brecon, who forced Colston all the way back to their 10 metre line. It'll be Colston ball from this line out. It'll be uh, Breckland ball from this line out, sorry. So plenty of expansive rugby on show now. As Brecken look to chuck it through the midfield. Number seven has dodged one tackle. But he can't get away from Lee. And as Rye comes back to cover, the ball is now loose on that far side. Christ College pull it across the line now and they've got a man over and Christ College it's a race to the corner and their number five Christ College cannot be stopped and despite lots of early pressure from this talented Colston side it is an overlap exploited by Christ College Brecon that will open the scoring And that is a tough start for Colston after all their hard work. It, it's always the way with sevens, isn't it? One tiny error anywhere on the park, uh, a missed tackle or a missed pass, and uh, your opposition can take advantage. That's great rugby from Christ. Uh, we were over at their place uh, a little while ago, a week or so ago. They're a very good team, play some excellent sevens. Yeah, number five for Christ Boys, time there. Runs for time runs. Just catching the front row, Max pulling out on the wide channel. Price College of Saw, of course. Saw off the challenge of Bristol Grammar School, who we've seen on the live stream today, who were performing excellently well. So certainly a talented side. And this perhaps the highest quality game we've witnessed so far today. As that kick hasn't gone 10, and Colson will come away with it. And the skipper, Pierce, puts it to the shoe. And that looks like it will trickle dead just five metres out. Lots of pressure that Colson have now piled on to Christ College. Yep, that's a second row that's kicking, the which is, I'm told, the modern way these the days. Uh, Paddy will hope to gap. work his magic in the line that's out, see so if he can't win it back for us, I think. Paddy Pierce has an excellent day so far, that's so physical. 
obviously part of that Bristol Bears side. Back and they the have nicked the ball back from us, that line out. We need over the ball now. But it's been swept up by Christ College Brecon as it looks to come away with it. That ball is loose, but they've still got a man on this outside channel let again. And this time he's up against Lee. But really cultured and patient play from inside their own 22 to form this overlap, but still they don't play with it. And it's very mature sevens rugby from Brecon, and this time contact is taken. No, no hands down, you're Some great work in the ruck. That's a number three beats this man, but that great offload from Jamie Thornton there. That offload's gone to floor. Swept up well by Brecon, and they're slowly creeping their way forward. Some good footwork there on number two and an excellent friend to beat his man. And another great step to break another tackle. And that is fantastic solo work. And it's only Paddy Pierce to get back. But the tackle is called high. And that will most certainly be a card for the skipper. And the penalty try has been given as well after an excellent solo run. Oh, bad luck, Paddy. It was a good effort to get back there. It is unfortunate after working so hard to get back, but seven points added yeah, for Christ That's College Brecon. And that will be half time in this first cup semi final. See there, it's, a, it's not dangerous, but high all the same, hence only the yellow card. And the man was through to score, so a penalty try has been given. That'll call an end to the first half of this cup semi-final. The host, Colston, really on the back foot with a mountain to climb in this second half if they wish to make it through to their home cup final and take them one step further than they could manage in 2019. Christ College Brecon have been physical and they've defended excellently well and taken the opportunities when they've been presented with them. We'll be back very shortly for the second half here on Next Gen 15, the cup semi-final of the Colston Sevens. So two tries in the opening half of this cup semi-final between the host Colston and Christ College Brecon. We're just going to uh, talk briefly uh, a little bit more about the Colston Sevens while I have the head of Colston School with me. Yeah, thanks, Wolf. Uh, it's obviously, it's a great day. Loads of effort gone into putting this on. Uh, I want to say a particular thank you to our head of rugby, Gervin Dempsey, who's masterminded so much of this. Uh, I've always already mentioned the ground staff, who I think have just done an amazing job of getting the pitches in this condition. Um, and I better thank the referees as well. Um, let's see if they can help us get back into this game in this second half. These tournaments take an awful lot to put together, and so far it's been an excellent day of rugby with uh, plenty of sides from the southwest, Wales, Bath, and Bristol all being involved, as well as the likes of Kirk and Grammar who have come down to compete. Yeah, I think their, their eagerness to come down here every year is a, a sign that it's always a good tournament. Uh, played in really good spirits, um, good facilities good competition and uh, we're always happy to see our friends from up the north just a knock on from that uh, Ollie Lamb kickoff has uh, given Colson this excellent position to build off of you can see the likes of um, Rye and Lee lining up in the backfield and it will be put to the boot here and now the chase is on with Ryan Lee under pressure but it's picked up really well by the Christ College man who takes on Lee, but is dragged down by the two Colston centres. But now, with an overlap, College Brick can look to play with it. Tackled excellently there by Rye. The ball is lifted. 
and the ref calls play on. And the number five, Ricken, who pasted on the outside for the opening try, has beaten their first man. But Ollie Lamb has jogged him down excellently well. Not backwards by Colston's play. Knocked backwards by Colston, but still Christ College ball. Excellent shot in the midfield. Great but Christ College there, still have a two on one. And it's played wide to the number eight with grass to run into. And that will be Christ College Brecon's third try of this semi final. 30 seconds. From turning over the ball deep inside their own half with some excellent handling, some really aggressive running. Some great pace on the ball and some added extras for a 21 lead against the six men of Colston School. Yep, it was going to be tough and it uh, only gets tougher when you lose a man for a, a little period, but hopefully we'll get Paddy back on soon. They can help us uh, get back into this. The uh, full complement of Colston players has been restored. Yep, time your own boys both sides. And there's still plenty of time for Colston School to get back into this semi-final. And the kick is over the head of Rye and it's been picked up by a, by Touch a that. Christ College man. Touch Yellow car can come on. But Rye has done really well to drag him out of touch as the seven-man Colston side is now fully formed ahead of this line out. Bit of pressure for Colston to deal with early on in the, from the kickoff. Yeah, I think the... Uh, we knew they would just keep working hard, these boys. They've got, uh, they've got a lot of good players, very physical, very quick, but they play good sevens. Uh, I think this is only our second run out and uh, still learning some bits and pieces, but I think uh, a good showing so far. A high quality of rugby on show across the tournament. As that line out is uh, ex executed well. And from it, Colson looked to break through the captain Pierce. He's got room to run into and he puts it to the shoe as well and now the pressure really is on Christ College who have been pushed all the way back pushed all the way back inside their 22 and yet they still look to play with it Pierce makes the tackle but it's passed inside well and he skipped past Ollie Lamb an excellent handling here they've got an overlap but that ball's gone loose Swept up well by Christ College, and he's pushed through the tackle and made a great offload. But this knock-on has created an excellent opportunity for Colston to build from. Yeah, some really good scrambling defence from the boys there. Good tackles from uh, Nick Jammer amongst others. Rohan coming on now. We'll get ready for some dancing feet off the back of this scrum. If he, uh, his former player has been anything to go by so far. Rohan Chastity has been excellent so far in this tournament as he looks to feed the scrum. Yeah, they do. Yeah. That's a yeah. safe scrum for uh, Colston, but <laughs> but Chatterjee has been held up by the Christ College players, and the turnover has been enforced. And now Christ College, from just inside their 10 meter, have another opportunity to run. They've just been so dangerous on the break, so physical, so far this tournament. Yeah, not quite the dancing that Rome was after there. Crouch, find, set. But an excellent scrum. A scrum from the boys, go on, Ron. And Chatterjee is away. He sold the dummy and found the offload to that number seven, Connor Massey. And it's still Colson Ball off the head of the captain, Pierce, as he looks to free the ball. Instead, he breaks the tackle himself. And Paddy Pierce is over with two minutes left to play. Colston have clawed back their first try of the three required to level up the score. That was a really great play there from Chatterjee. And then a great offload. Again from Chatterjee, off the head of Paddy Pierce and great physicality to go over the line. Yeah, I'm not sure we've been practicing on that one on the training ground, but we'll, <laughs> we'll take it at this stage of the match. Not sure we got the conversion there, so uh, still need a bit of playing here. The un unsuccessful conversion for Colson, so they still have three scores to gain. But uh, in the game of sevens, things can change so quickly as we've seen so far in this tournament. I should probably put in a big word for Martha and Leila Bell, who are our ball uh, people on this pitch at the minute. They've been on and off every time there's a score, working really hard supporting uh, the first seven here. 
That's an excellent conversion kick there. But the Christ College man cannot be put down. They've been so physical in their running so far. But that is an excellent turnover on the floor from the captain, Paddy Pierce, and Chatterjee is away with it. And he's gone to the boot once again. But another penalty has gone Colson's way. And Colson are really keen to get going with it. With uh, 30 seconds left to play in this fixture, so they look to finish strong. It's tapped by Lee. Thornton. And wide to the captain. First one by Christ, second one by Colson. Scrum down, Colson's ball. And another good platform for Colson. Yep, we've uh, got a massive one of our seven specialists is off. We've got uh, Will Crawshaw on in the scrum, I think, now. We'll look for a strong base and something to build on. Jamie Thornton, Harry Lee, Nick Chamu, all got electric pace when they get the chance. Bind, set. And as the clock ticks into overtime, the game may be past Colston, but they look to finish with a flurry as Thornton takes it to the line. He pulls it back to Chatterjee. Chashi takes on two men, but frees the ball up. And Jamu still has the ball there in the ruck. And a penalty there for hands in the ruck. Chashi will go quick, and he'll touch down himself, unopposed from that penalty. Yeah, great quick thinking from Rowan. He's been uh, a real live wire today for us. Not quite the result we were after here, but some, uh, some good sevens right up to the end. So Colston have matched their uh, impressive performance in 2019 with another semi-final showing. Love some closing remarks from Colston as they exit the tournament. Well, it, it's been a great day so far. The standard of rugby is fantastic. Uh, and as I've said, lots of people to thank for that. Um, but it's really good so many teams are keen to come here and play really impressive schoolboy sevens. Uh, and it's been great having you guys along from, from Next Gen. Commentary's been brilliant. Uh, the uh, camera work, I'm told, the folks watching at home have really enjoyed that. So I'm sure this is something we want to want to keep working with in future years. Well, it isn't the end of our coverage today on uh, Next Gen. The finals are yet to come. Unfortunately, the host Colston will not be in attendance as Christ College Brecon storm forward into the cup final. Lots to play for. Uh, as we have plenty of cups still on show. Thank you so much, the head of Colston School, Mr McCulloch. It's been absolutely fantastic to have you with us. It's been a real pleasure. It's been a pleasure to watch from the gang tree here and see how you guys are doing. It's really impressive coverage of schoolboy rugby, so thank you very much. We'll have a short break now before we head on to our next round of fixtures. It looks like Whitchurch have progressed so far in the final as they line up on pitch. Uh, we'll get the full results to you as soon as we have them. We'll be back very shortly for the next round of fixtures here on Next Gen and our coverage of the Colson Sevens. Introducing Next Gen 15, the new home school up. Well, where does this come from? Covering everything the school game has to offer in both the North and Southern Hemispheres. Oh, the great tackle! Oh. It's not good enough! One, two, skip a few and with the wheels! Highlighting tomorrow's stars, Next Gen 15 will be bringing you live games and regular updates of all the news and in-depth views on the global game. What a kick! Where's he gone, Robin? All your school rugby, all in one place. This is Next Gen 50.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Colston Sevens. Two finals happening at the moment. The bowl and trophy final. On the screen here is the bowl final between, as we saw in our last game, the semi-finals for the bowl, just before that cup competition. Pryor Park College from Bath up against Whitchurch from Wales. Slight delay as uh, we go looking for our referee, which is the perfect time to talk you through the sponsors that NextGen have supporting us on our live streams today. The first, very important, our medical partners return to play, the leading sports medical providers in schools. Their groundbreaking work eases the burden on schools and helps protect and care for pupils, specializing particularly in head injuries, which is so crucial. They're making a huge difference in an area that is vital not just to schoolboy rugby, but for rugby in general. We really appreciate their support and their continued support of the schoolboy game. And our analytical partners, Coach Log Logic, who focus on player-led analysis with a space for player engagement, where you can clip up your games, do analysis, and create highlight packages as well, which I know that these schoolboy players absolutely love putting together. All our footage is available through them as well. Slight delay looking for the referee, but up next on Next Gen 15's coverage of the Colston Sevens, but with the first of four cop competitions, three of which we are showing. This is the bowl, the third tier bowl cup final. Prior Park College of Bath against Whitchurch of Wales. We'll be back very shortly. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the bowl final here at the Colston Sevens, the Premium Sevens competition in the southwest of England. On pitch today, it's Pride Park College of Bath up against Whitchurch of Wales. Whitchurch seeing off the competition of Key ES from Bath itself, while Pride Park took down Moncton in an all Bath semi final. Both these teams have already appeared for us today. On the live stream, Whitchurch falling to Bristol Grammar, who, interestingly enough, are in the plate final, which will be on next. Bristol Grammar take on Queen Elizabeth Hospice School in an all-Bristol final. Whereas Whitchurch fell to the very impressive King's College Taunton. So both sides with a point to prove here, and with silverware up for grabs. You'll see on pitch that Pryor Park are in white and Whitchurch in the dark blue and turquoise. Change of ends as Pride Park looks to get underway. 
to Pro Park with the first kick of the game. This, the final fixture for both these sides involved today. With silverware up for grabs, the bowl competition, the third string competition here at the Colson Sevens, but still silverware that every team would like to take away with them. As Pride Park get us underway, claimed excellently well in the I'm air right. there for Whitchurch. The ref calls hands away, but the ball was still turned over as Whitchurch come away with it through their number 20. Powerful run there up to the halfway line. Despite an attempt to counter ruck, so Whitchurch ball spilled in the midfield. Swept up well. Pride Park would love nothing more than to turn over a side on a Bristol pitch, and that's exactly what they'll do from this opening play, an interception from the base of the ruck. The perfect start for Pride Park College. 5-0 already ends Whitchurch following that interception. Sevens can be a cruel game. The slightest of errors when an attack is so vulnerable to counter-attacks when there's no players lined up in the backfield. And that's a perfect start for Pry Park. And with the extras added, Whitchurch already are in need of a comeback. It's great line speed there. Really clever work to pick off that pass. And at the start of a physical encounter, Whitchurch working really hard to disrupt at the ruck. Pry Park of drawn first blood in the first game of the day for Silverware. That's an excellent kick there from Pride Park, just gone 10, and it's been recovered as well. But turned over on the floor, the second turnover of the day for Whitchurch. And Whitchurch will come away with it, taking their time as they look for touch. And it's an excellent kick, which will just roll just inside the 22 for Whitchurch for their first line out of this fixture. And they've given themselves a great platform to counter that early Pride Park score. White step. step. And this final fixture of the day for both of these sides will be desperate to come away with a win. An excellent line out has led to a maul from that line out. Now the ball is loose and passed short, regathered from with a fumble. But it was tipped into the hands from the fumble there. A clever little move from uh, Whitchurch. But unfortunately, scrum down for Pride Park and they'll escape from this uh, perilous attacking position. Blue hooker, right, sir. Let's go. Step, step back. I do. Crouch. The rugby isn't flowing so far. We've had an intercept uh, and a penalty is the only way that the, um, the ball has travelled down the pitch. But an early shove from yes. Whitchurch has given Pryor Park some leeway to play with it. They saw off a very physical Monkford in the first semi-final, and it's a physical Whitchurch causing them problems. Oh, Turnover inside the 22 and quick ball. Whitchurch have the numbers outside if they use them. The secured ball at the ruck. And Whitchurch looks to take on the man one on one. Shrugs off one defender. It's played wide. The outside man is not needed. Lads, we have a knock on by White. But in the scramble on the ground, the ball has been knocked on by Prior Park once again. And Whitchurch retained possession. One more ball there, you must say, would have led to a score. But they still have an opportunity to turn the tide on this game. They're using their physicality so well. Some really big, dynamic, powerful runs there from some of these Whitchurch forwards, if you can call them forwards nowadays in this format. Crouch. Still, Whitchurch have the opportunity Set. from just five metres out. Powerful Pride Park scrum has put Whitchurch under some pressure, but they've retained possession. They're very narrow, no much options wise. They go to the pick and go. Reminiscence of the uh, 15 season here as they drive upwards towards the try line. But this tactic is working as they trumble forward. And that is a try in the try. far channel by Whitchurch number 19 and captain. Not the conventional sevens we're used to today at Colston. We've seen some free-flowing Jouet rugby. 
but effective nonetheless, as Whitchurch have leveled the score in terms of tries. It'll be really tough to add the extras from that wide channel, but we've seen kicks like that come off so far today. Decent attempt will fall short, and Whitchurch will trail by two points five minutes into this first half. Two minutes to go until the break. As we see here, this really dominant physical contact. Doesn't matter what type of game you're playing. No matter how many players on the pitch, if you can make this sort of ground with the pick and goes, you're always going to have success from inside the 22. And that's the case so far as Whitchurch look to get the game underway. Yeah, you're kicking. Let's go. Perhaps not a try for the scrapbook, but certainly an important one as Whitchurch send the ball high into this greying, chilly Bristol night, and it's been spilled. Perhaps the grey clouds above making it rather hard to uh, pick this ball out. That is unfortunate, and another great platform for a dominant Whitchurch. A physically dominant Whitchurch to exploit. And Whitchurch do come away with it. But Priory Park with a counter shove means that the nine has spilled it. And now Priory Park can move forward as they flick the ball wide. Really patient play. Great shifting of the play there. Switches inside and out. And a dummy has allowed the Priory Park man to come through. He's got the legs. It's a race to the corner. He slipped off his tackle. And a physical collision there has brought him down inside the 22. But there are hands on the floor there, not allowing the offload free. And now Priory Park will play quick with it. And there's a three on two in that wide channel. As Whitchurch look to clean up at the back. But it's still Priory Park ball. And now it's a dart for the corner. For Priory Park's most diminutive player, who's been excellent all day. He spotted the gap on that wide channel. Bit of footwork to beat his first man. Your hands the ball, and Park have extended their league lead to 12 points to five as we've hit half time. Poor discipline from Whitchurch there has allowed uh, Priory Park into the far corner as they look to add the extras to make this a two score game. The conversion will fill short to seven point fixture as we come into the half time break in our first game of the afternoon with silverware at stake. It's Priory Park of Bath. So far, seven points ahead from Whitchurch of Wales. See a lovely bit of footwork on the outside to beat his man. No chance for uh, Whitchurch number 19. And that's everything from the first half so far. With a bowl at stake, it's Priory Park College 12, Whitchurch 5, with the second half still to come from next-gen 15 at the Colston Sevens.
Welcome back to the second half of this bowl final. We'll start with a Whitchurch kick that has not gone. The required 10 metres. Now Pride Park College of Bath will have a platform to play with. It's been a close affair in this first half. And Pride Park retained the advantage as the ball's put to the shoe once again. It's been really successful for some sides today. But a knock on there knock on by, by Pride Park in an attempt to recover the ball. Blue. It's given Whitchurch possession once more. Knock on. White marks here. Genuinely really tight Blue. encounter. Whitchurch have had opportunities inside Pride Park's 22. They've only converted once. Whereas Pride Park have been uh, latching onto the mistakes of Whitchurch very well before uh, an excellent try. With some really great sevens rugby in the uh, towards the end of the first half, which has put them ahead. Tackle. But now it's with church ball. Language, that's language, thank you. Well, that's an excellent play there and a high tackle <laughs> by Pride Park. Off you go. Round the neck, so a yellow card is the call. Not malicious, high but uh, it's good to see the referees enforcing the uh, rules of the game to the full extent. As with church. Use the boot, and that ball just trickles, just shy of Pride Park's five metres. In this last position, of course, we saw Whitchurch up for the maul, which is, as a front row myself, an excellent addition to the sevens game, in my opinion. But I would say that. White, Mark set. Regardless of your opinions on the modern game, this is an excellent position for Whitchurch to build from, as they do opt for the maul. And they pull wide, an offload to the number nine will put him into the corner. An excellent set piece. And that is exactly why all front rows should play sevens rugby. I'm sorry, that was specifically aimed at my sixth form coach. He didn't pick me for Roslyn Park. Just need to get that out. But still an excellent score, nonetheless. Unsuccessful conversion. But Whitchurch have scored through two very physical set pieces. This is excellent work here to set them all, drawing the defenders. Excellent movement there by Whitchurch number nine. Sees where the space is, draws in two defenders. That is excellent work Seven. from Whitchurch's 19. He's certainly been their uh, best player on the park today. And now Whitchurch have the opportunity to get the game underway. Yep. It's a two point game with Priory Park, with Prior Park still down. A player, and that ball is spilt from the kickoff. So with 20 more seconds, playing against six men, Whitchurch really do have an opportunity here to take the lead for the first time in this fixture. As Whitchurch's physical roster continues, no let up in terms of size for their uh, very talented side. But there is an injury. Number 14 for Whitchurch has gone down. And the physios will come on. So the time is off for this injury. Four minutes left in this uh, very close bowl final. The first bit of silverware on offer today at the Colson Sevens. And the next try would be crucial, regardless of who it's for. But the number 14 down receiving treatment. Just a reminder, a thank you even to our sponsors, Return to Play. And thank you, of course, for all the work they're doing in schoolboy rugby. Return to Play, of course, the leading sports medical providers in schools up and down the country. Groundbreaking work eases the burden on schools, helps protect and care for pupils in really crucial areas, especially surrounding head injuries. We'll go here. Which is a constant worry, I know, for any parent of a schoolboy rugby player. So their work is really important. As Whitchurch looks to get the game underway from this scrum. Clean ball for Whitchurch, but the nine is wrapped up. But it's been swept up really well by Whitchurch number 22, who turns on the gas and takes it to the corner. And for the first time in this bowl semi-final, Whitchurch have taken the lead. And the six men of Prior Park College of Bath have really struggled with that man disadvantage. 
The ball came loose from the scrum, but it was swept up excellently by Whitchurch's 22. And it was a foot race to the corner. But this powerful young player had no struggles darting in to put Whitchurch ahead. It's great work by Pride Park's nine to wrap him up. It's just a really excellent pick up there. And a physical mismatch as he beats two players and dots it down to put Whitchurch in the lead for the first time. And now for the first time in this fixture, following their early intercept, it's up to Pride Park College to respond, and they have not. The ball has been spilled from kickoff. And there's already a man overlap of Whitchurch looked to exploit. But it's unfortunately been spilt on the wide channel. Time off, head injury. Yeah, I've caused a bad situation. You had two complete passes. And this time the injury is called head. Which of course makes it really important that it's sorted out to the full degree. Just an unfortunate clash between the two Whitchurch players as they dive for the ball on the floor there. And this really is a crucial part of the game now for Fire Park. It's their scrum, will be their feed from just inside their own 22. We've seen plenty of teams go coast to coast so far in this tournament. But it will be absolutely crucial for Pryor Park to use this platform efficiently. And uh, which was number 14 receiving some excellent treatment. Uh, so we've got just over two minutes. Just over two minutes, calls the referee. So plenty of time for Pryor Park to get back into this game and put themselves ahead in this bowl final. Plenty of rugby still to come after this fixture, of course. We have the plate and cup final live for you here on Next Gen 15 in Bristol at the Colston Sevens. The weather just starting to turn. It's certainly getting cold here in the gantry. Got an excellent view of uh, Colston's beautiful pitches. Thank you very much for Colston for being so accommodating with everyone today. But uh, as the sky turns grey, we might be seeing Whitchurch's brand of rugby Thank you. with their physicality yeah. and impressive set-piece execution coming out on top. Lads, he's got, he's got to go off, so bring someone on, please. We've got someone on already, yeah? Substitutions have been made, and the game looks to be getting underway. Ready? Time on. We had a knock on by Blue. Scrum White. Blue, your mark is here. Come on, call it in, lad. Ready. Crap! Ready. Boy! Set! Ready! Boy! Let's go! And the powerful Whitchurch scrum has turned the ball over. And in this crucial part of the game, Whitchurch's 22 is darting through. He spins out of the tackle and it's over. Fantastic footwork, the turn, and then another step to be a third defender. Has allowed Whitchurch to consolidate their fourth try of this bowl final. And perhaps with only two minutes to go, put Whitchurch out in front at an unattainable level. Still only an eight-point game with no extras being added so far. But that scrum from Whitchurch, that really powerful, really powerful front row has turned the ball over. And then this is really excellent work. The turn there to say goodbye to his defender and then crashing over with three defenders around him. Those attributes can't be coached. And that's been the difference between these two sides today, just the physicality of Whitchurch. It's been really impressive and they've been really dominant. But the game's not over yet, as Pride Park looks to use this overlap on the far side. Tackle, hands away. They're up to their 22. No. Turned over in the ruck, but not legally so, and Pride Park need to get this underway as quickly as they can. Go on, on you. Ball is tapped. 
But Whitchurch have got a high press. Closing down the space really well. But Pride Park have shifted off one man. Got away from two. Great footwork to put the man on the floor. And perhaps Pride Park spot the space and the gap's been found. And now it's a foot race with no defenders in front. But the ball has been spilled in the contact there and Whitchurch have turned it over. And now once again, Whitchurch have come away with it. Really unfortunate there just to lose the ball in one hand. But now Whitchurch have an overlap if they can use it. Excellent offload there. And it's the try scorer from moments ago who's darting towards the corner. And he's seen off his man. And he'll take his time. And he will win the bowl for Whitchurch. That'll take the game beyond Pride Park College, who have been excellent on this live stream all day today. But it's the physicality and the pace and the power of Whitchurch, as well as some excellent handling that has finished it off with five tries. This will be the final conversion of the afternoon for Whitchurch. It'll drift right and wide. But it's no bother for Whitchurch as they've come away with the first set of silverware in the afternoon. This pass there, excellent off the floor. And then that physical well mismatch on the outside. A bit of pace, a bit of power. Excellent fend. Well so that brings an end to Whitchurch and Pride Park, Pride Park College's exploits in this tournament. The final score, 25-12 to Whitchurch as they come away with the bowl. Up next is the plate in the Colston Sevens. It's an all-Bristol final with Bristol Grammar up against Queen Elizabeth Hospital. We'll be back very shortly for coverage of the plate final. Congratulations to Whitchurch, you come away with the bowl. We'll be back very shortly for next gen's coverage of the Colston Sevens. Up next is the plate final. Is that there? Oh yeah, it was blue, yeah, thank you, yeah. Blue, well done, well done. Hopefully your player is going to be all right, okay, that your man. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to coverage of the Colston Sevens. Today, we're right, right here in front of us right now is the plate semi-final between Quay H, Queen Elizabeth's Hostel, and Bristol Gram, an all-Bristol final on Colston's pitches, which the less said about the better uh, for Colston's players today. But silverware at stake for both these sides. And I'm incredibly lucky to be joined for co-commentary for both the final and the semi-final by former England Rugby Union player Tom Vandell of both the Bristol Bears and Wasps, and my hometown club of Bury Lemons. <laughs> Thank you very much for joining me today. No, oh, thanks for having me. Um, really great to be here to see the stand of rugby on show. Um, and my old school as well, Colston. So it's, uh, no, it's really nice to be here. I've been here for about 10 years, I don't think. So uh, it's been a long time. There's been some excellent rugby on show that I'm sure Tom would be proud of himself as the grammar school looks to break it away. Excellent turn there by the 21. And into the wide channel straight away. I'm really excited to hear from you, Tom, but Sevens is as frantic as you can get. Yeah, I mean, I love Sevens. I mean, but in my career, I think I played it um, at, in Dubai, in Hong Kong. I was very lucky enough to, to put on the English shirt for Sevens. And uh, to see the guys here and the way they're playing is fantastic. Spreading the ball wide, find the holes and scoring some great tries. Speaking of finding the holes, it's Bristol Grammar's 12, who's split through a hole there and released the 10, who's been injecting pace all afternoon. Consolidation of possession for Bristol. Some good patient play. 
Yeah, they're holding the ball really, really well, building the phases, and I think we're going to... Oh, oh. Excellent footwork there to cut back inside onto the short side. And a penalty as well. Hands in the ruck there for QEH. And Bristol Crammer crash up towards the 22, but an excellent shot has caused the ball to go loose. Still in Bristol Grammar possession. And a massive overlap, which must be exploited. Just got to go wide with my pass, go on. And it's into the wide channels with one oh, man to beat. Try. And the opening score two minutes into this plate final. And that, it's Bristol Grammar to open the scoring. That was great sevens. They just held onto the ball. I think from the QES haven't had the ball once yet, and they've held onto the ball there, built the phases, kept their patience and gone in, gone in the corner. Really excellent play all round. In a plate final, which means an awful lot for these teams. Of course, representing the city of Bristol in a Bristol tournament, the uh, premium tournament for sevens in the southwest of England. And just the ball comes loose here. And you see it spread wide. They're not, they don't rush it. They're patient with their play. They exploit this overlap. The number six comes back inside to draw his last man. It's a good fend, an excellent finish yeah, great to open finish. the scoring. Great finish. The kick's gone short from Bristol Grammar, so an opportunity for QEH for a free kick. Yeah, free shot here for QEH. Obviously, kickoff is so important in sevens to try and get that ball back. Obviously, QEH get the ball back now at the halfway and get a chance to reply. Good footwork from QEH's diminutive nine. And it's an excellent offload as well to keep the ball alive. An excellent show and go from the 17 with one man to beat in the backfield, chopped excellently well. Oh. And the ball is turned over. It's a great turnover there. Great commitment on the tackle. Now the grammar school look to counter. Well, they remain patient with their play, which not every team has done today. You've seen some teams have been quite frantic. But this offloading is the best way to build a gap. As a 13 is thrown to the floor there by Quay, which is larger front row. As they look to cause a turnover. But still Bristol grammar ball. The 12 hits the line with some gas, but it's intercepted. And it's the number 17 is going to saunter through. That is unfortunate for Bristol Grammar, who were being so patient with their play. They were, they were, but it's great, great defence there. They I mean, the defence has stayed high. They've gotten the passing channels. And obviously, they picked off the interception then. And it's a great try and obviously levelled up the scores. Well, we know how quickly things can change in the game of sevens. We thought the number 17 himself was going to go over with his excellent running form earlier before being turned over. But he's recovered with an interception and the two points added, which will put QEH ahead by two points. It's a lovely grab there and an easy finish. Got some pace as well, isn't he, this number 12? 12. So it'll be QEH to get the game underway. So how, how much sevens have you been uh, enjoying this afternoon so far? It's been brilliant so far. Obviously, I've only been here for, for a couple of hours, um, but it's been fantastic. And schoolwear rugby is so important to the growth of the game. So seeing these boys showing their skills, it just it bodes well for the future of the game itself in this, in this country. And Bristol's patient, Bristol Grammar's patient pattern of play. Still bearing fruit. As they still retain possession just inside their 10 metres. That bouncing ball recovered well by their number 10. And still the ball in possession here as they take it into the wide channels. Oh. He's thrown down by the number three. The referee calls no foul play, and it'll be a QEH line out. Oh, penalty. Penalty there. What I like about QEH, their patience in defense is really good, but they're also bringing that aggression. They're staying high. They are rushing the um, Bristol Grammar attack. Speaking of QEH attack, they're in the wide channels once again, and the offload inside, dragged down just five meters short. A real opportunity now for QEH to stretch their advantage. And they've got numbers on this wide channel. They found the outside man, cuts inside, puts his number five to the floor and That's slides great. in to coolly finish and put QEH two tries to the good. Really, really good sevens there. Spreading the ball nice and wide, stretching the defence and a nice simple finish in the corner. Really, really good. 
going from sideline to sideline like that, how difficult is that in a sevens defence when you've never got the numbers to fully match up? It is. It's so tough because the defence is constantly being stretched from side to side. So eventually there will be holes, whether it be on the outside channels or through the middle. The defence does open up eventually because everyone gets tired. There's a, lot, there's a lot of running out there for seven guys. Another great kick as well. And with the extras added, it's now a two-score game for Bristol Grammar School, who looked the stronger of these two sides, having them both appeared on the live stream today. Bristol Grammar really did put uh, Whitchurch to the sword. It was a lovely step inside. Great finish from uh, really QEH as number three. QEH are actually coached by Adrian Jarvis, one of my former teammates at Bristol. Um, so you know, they, have, they have a good coaching team behind them. They'll, know, they'll be know what to do in the, on the sevens pitch. Excellent insider Bristol knowledge. Exactly what we were, exactly what was needed in the commentary box today. And Bristol Grammar, they've played with a lot more patience than QEH have an attack, but until now it doesn't seem to have borne the fruit required. Saying that, they fashion themselves an overlap, and one dummy and Fend has put the number 21 through. But the ball's come out the wrong side of that interchange number 21, who seems to be on the floor at the moment. A bit of a whack there, didn't he? It was a really tough collision there as he looked to get the ball away. People forget how physical a game sevens can be. Oh, yeah, it is, definitely, it is. I mean, obviously, you think about sevens, it's more of an attacking game, but the defence is so important because it's so easy to turn from attacking defence, concede a try. You can be on one side of the pitch and then turn over, miss a tackle, and you're underneath your post. So defence is such a massive part of this game. Unfortunate for... Um, the number 21 for Bristol Grammar to leave the pitch. He's been really bright today as the halftime whistle goes. But an excellent time to mention one of our sponsors today helping out with our live stream and the performances that we can broadcast to you. Of course, it's Return to Play, our medical partners, providing sports medical practice to schools up and down the country. And their groundbreaking work spe specialising in head injuries is so crucial to schoolboy rugby and rugby in general. So we thank them for their constant work across the country. We'll leave you with the highlights of the first half and return very promptly for the second half of our first, second final of the day, the plate final, which QEH currently lead over Bristol Grammar. A tight affair, but we'll return very promptly for the second half, very shortly. Back for the second half of the penultimate game of the Colson Sevens, the plate final, hotly contested between Bristol Grammar and QEH. Bristol Grammar have been patient in their attack so far, but QEH have picked off the mistakes and currently lead. Oh, that's Ex an unbelievable offload. <laughs> Excellent physical running for the number 17. He's been physical all day with a great offload. Although QEH look to extend their advantage. Excellent offload out the oh. back there as well. One more pass should do it. Oh, and a lightning fast start is to the fantastic. half. That is fantastic. The offloading game, the physicality in the runs, and then a score under the post. That was brilliant. Great start. Well, we might have only been back for 30 seconds, but um, sparks are already flying in the second half of this plate final. QEH have really turned it on in the second half of this tournament. They really have. I mean, that try, it was just, it was just brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. And that's the start you need when, when, you're, in, when you're in finals rugby. And the two points have been added yet again. We'll see here, this is a lovely run. And this ball inside, the offload. Draw two defenders in. And then the backfield, great, flooding the gap, really important mm. in sevens rugby. 
and in the styles that uh, Bristol like to play. Both these sides must love the Bears. That's an excellent kick as well, easily contestable, and it has been contested, but it will be a Bristol Grammar player to swoop it up excellently well. And that's a really physical carry as well. Excellent pick up by the number 12 from that loose ball. And Bristol will come away with it. That was a really physical carry by the number seven there yeah, as well. Yeah, it really was. In Bristol grammar, they are. They're very patient in attack. They just need to start running some harder lines now and sucking this defence. It's all well and good playing this you know, very patient attacking game, but they need to start going forward. They need to get back into this game. Four tries required for uh, Bristol grammar. Plenty of time to score them in the game of sevens. As that really physical number seven again comes running through. Good offload, that's brilliant. Excellent take. And now it's a run to the line. Number 13 goes to the shoe. Oh. It's brought down. And turned over straight away by Bristol Grammar's number 14. One more pass, that'll do it. Go on. Bristol Grammar have a man down, but are still playing on. But the referee's playing on. And the Bristol Grammar man's been wrapped up. Bristol Grammar still a still a man down. But a penalty given there. An attempted kick through of the ruck. And now the substitution will be made. Some confusion there yeah, from the referee. Attempts to stop the game, but obviously the, the injured player wasn't involved in play. Yeah, exactly, but I think Bristol Grammar, like, we've got a man down here. We, need, we didn't have a man back on the pitch. Especially given the defence of the other team. It's been brilliant. Tap and go from Bristol Grammar. Great footwork from the 14 and an offload. The ball's come loose at the ruck, but another penalty for hands in the ruck. That's the second penalty inside their own half now. And Bristol Grammar will feel the momentum swing their way. The number 10 looks to inject some pace. Ball back inside. And a great offload to their number 12 as he breaks his first few tackles, still driving. Flicks the ball out the back. Number 10 has space in front of him. There's an overlap now on that far side as they look to use the space. One more pass and then in the corner. Great try. Then you quick turn around here, get this ball kicked over the post. And then they need what, two, three more tries. Okay. They'll still need another two tries to turn this around. And they'll need some conversions. This one is not the kick they're after, but still an excellent try here. We saw this patient play, but uh, when it came down to it, I mean, they're just hanging off five players around in there, the number 12. And then this is, a, this is an excellent ball here. Gets onto his stronger hand. And then a textbook two yeah, on one. That's really nice. Really, really nice. So that's it. When they turn the switch and they start being aggressive in attack, they can break down this defence. Still a lot, plenty of time, plenty of time to get back into this game. Bristol that's Grammar's get us on the way. An excellent kick. Very good kick. An off. excellent kick claimed even better by their number 10. And this 14 is drawing so many players to him every time he's on the ball. But it's another penalty of the ruck and a yellow card for a QEH man. So for almost the remainder of this fixture, Bristol Grammar will play with a man advantage. And perhaps we could see an unlikely comeback. And number five takes on his man with a step. Oh, and he floats out the back to the 14. He's got three men around him. Come on, boys! Come on! Come on! Losing that man at this stage in the game could be very costly. QEH. They look a bit tired now as well. They've done a lot of work in this game so far. They're starting to look a little bit fatigued. And BGS have really stepped it up in the last sort of two or three minutes. A yellow card there for an accumulation of penalties inside their own half. Uh, but the scrum is exactly the kind of platform that Bristol Grammar need with the man advantage in the backfield. It's always on out wide. And the ball's finally come out of the scrum. The nine has been wrapped up. But offside called with the number nine coming around too quickly. Whoa. And another 10 metres for back chat. Could be looking at another yellow card if too many penalties come forward. But this is an excellent platform for the grammar school. They must score from this position. Five oh. metres out with a man advantage. Ripped away in the tackle. Oh, they've got the knock on. It was, it was cleanly ripped by QEH in the tackle there. But another scrum, this time five metres out, centre of the pitch. If they don't score here. <laughs> I, know. I know, they need to score here. They're literally on the try line. Get this score done, get back, get another try. I think we're all square. 
Oh. And that ball's gone loose at the back of the scrum, but thankfully the referee has called for a reset. It's just chipping away at that time, isn't it? Just running away from him a little bit now. Two tries in a minute is the requirement for the grammar school. Still possible if they were to score from this set play. Oh, but the pool's come out the wrong side of gonna, that scrum. They're going to go the length of it. And now QEH are away. And there's a two on one with the number five. It's a high tackle, but the referee has left it. Oh, Flicked out the back offload. excellently well. And put to oh. the boot. And a fantastic decision. But it can't be gathered. Oh. And perhaps now Bristol Grammar School can go the other way. Still with the man advantage. The number 12 is wrapped up well. Still in need of two tries as the clock ticks over into the red. With a one-man advantage still in play, QEH are defending excellently well. Another tackle from the loose offload. A great line, but a forward pass from the Bristol Grammar man as the yellow card is called back onto the field for what is likely to be the final play of this fixture. You've got to give it to the QEH um, defence. It's, it's very, been very, very good. Very aggressive, shutting down the space of, B, of uh, BGS the whole game. They had a small stint when um, they started looking a little bit, little bit tired, but they've definitely picked it up for the last sort of 30 seconds of this game. Really, really good. So right at the end of this incredibly physical, incredibly taxing day of rugby, it seems that in the, in the battle of the two Bristol schools remaining in this competition, it is QEH who will come out on top against the Grammar School in the Colston Sevens Plate Final as they look to finish with a flourish. Excellent tackle by the Bristol Grammar man. But QEH goes streaming through to the number three and shakes off his man. It's a race to the corner. And QEH will win that race and confirm their place as plate champions here at the Colston Sevens. Very good performance. Really, really good from both teams, actually. Like you said, it's been a long day for them. But they finished really strongly. Real good game. It's been an excellent game of rugby. And although this game might be over, the main event is still to come. As ref calls full time on this plate final, it's a jubilant QEH who will come away with the plate. But there's still plenty of rugby to come. Up next is our cup final. And it'll be Kings College Taunton up against Christ College Brecon. Two incredibly talented teams who've had an excellent day so far. We'll be back very shortly for your coverage of the final while we leave you the highlights of the plate final. So QEH come away with the plate, but who will come away with the cup? We'll be back very shortly to find out with Next Gen 15 here at the Colston Sevens. Well, the sun is out. It is a beautiful early evening here, late afternoon, for the final of the Colston Sevens. After a long day of rugby, it's come down to this. It's King's College Taunton in the red and black up against Christ College Brecon in the gold and green. 
And what a start that is for King Swallows. And number 12 goes streaming away. He's taken it straight off the kickoff. One swivel and he's down beyond Christ College's line. <laughs> it's a hell of a start, isn't it? Hell of a start. I'm still here with Tom Varndell, former professional rugby player for both Wasps and Bristol. And the Tigers. <laughs> Got my uh, little boy here just correcting you there. <laughs> He's very welcome in this commentary box. <laughs> now that is a, that's a great start, and that's what you want. And it just shows the importance of kickoffs. You get it right, you can be one, one, one end of the pitch. You get it wrong like them, then you obviously can see the try. And the, the pace, the pace in the number 12 was fantastic, bro. I believe the number 12 is Tommy Foa. And it'll be their number one, perhaps their best player, Charlie Charland, for the fantastic tournament to attempt the conversion. We see here straight from kickoff, nothing wrong with this kickoff, but it's picked off, and as he spins, the attempted tackler can't find his man, and he's got excellent pace. As Charland and will kick us underway. Is a great kickoff as well. Oh. It's claimed by the college, oh, it. Christ College man. These are two outstanding rugby teams. We saw on this pitch, Christ College put uh, perhaps the favourites, Colston, to the sword in their last fixture. And in an all Taunton semi cup semi final on the other pitch, it's uh, King's College who have come on top. And King's College who have turned it over. Release green. Thank you. Been so impressed all day with um, the boys' contact skills. They've been brilliant over the break and they fight for everything, don't they? Everything they see is an opportunity to get that ball back. It's a high penalty for a high tackle there. This ball will come wide again through the number five. It's an excellent shot there from the Christ College man. And a turnover at the base of the ruck. And that'll be Owen Conker, the number two, as Christ College come away with it. Great footwork. Lovely footwork to find some space, be brought down well. And Christ College will come away with it. And it's an excellent oh, bit of pace there. The number eight doesn't scream. That initial acceleration through the tackles. Brilliant. And an offload out the back, oh. and still they come away with it. And this time they're into the corner. And they'll beat his last man and dot oh. it down under the post. God, I think we're in for a hell of a game here. This is going to be good. What really, a bit of really rugby good. that was. Really dominant line. Took eight up the space really well. And it's Alec Williams, the number nine. He will score and convert to give Christ College a two-point advantage. What a really excellent bit of rugby. Really, really good. Started off with a turnover in their own 22, and then the hands to ship it wide to the pace man on the outside was brilliant. Really, really good. But that initial acceleration through the tackle in the middle of the pitch, that's what set it all off. Oh, that's not gone 10. <laughs> Unfortunately for Christ College, his last kickoff was so successful, but it'll be King's College Taunton to get it underway. Charland oh, inside the line. number five, an excellent line, only one man to beat. He's beaten him with the fend, and the covering tackle is outstanding. And now, just five metres short, oh. it's been swept up <laughs> by a Christ College hand. defender. Oh, and now Christ oh. College will come away with it. I thought he was in there. He was clean through, a hell of a line. And then but, a switch of play, and they look like they're going to go to the other end, uh, other end of the pitch. Real end-to-end -end stuff here in the final of the Colston Sevens, the culmination of all the best Sevens rugby in the southwest. And Christ College can be away again. A big fend there. Oh. He's freed his man. That and as, man's he on fire. as he slows down, number eight, <laughs> Dylan Skyrim, with an excellent run. A big fend in the midfield. And he was free, completely on his own, to slowly dot down for Christ College. Dylan's having a good final so far. And that last try, the first try they scored, he was the one that started that off with his break in the midfield. And just Soon. then, his pace and the strength to go away from the tackle was brilliant. As Matthew Price to convert. And suddenly, after King's College's excellent start, it's 14-5. That's a great foot and fend there from Owen Conker. And Dylan's through the hole there. Excellent fend. And no one stopping him. Not even the pace of Archie Spokes can uh, keep up as King's College get us underway once again in this high-flying semi-final. Knocked down by Green. Scrum red. Peter Banks under a bit of pressure there, number seven. Uh, cleaned up, though, 
after a knock on by Christ College. And they'll look to go again. What a frantic start to this final. So many five it? minutes in. Yeah, it is. Three tries scored. Back and forth. Lots of turnovers. There's some great play as well on the tries. The build up play has been brilliant. It's a dominant scrum there by Christ College Brecon. But the ball still comes King's College's way. And Taunton looked to play with it. King's College still in control. As Christ College looked to uh, eat the space. But possibly now an overlap on this uh, near side. Three never rolled. Three three not rolling. Tackler did not roll away in time, and now there'll be ball to play with for King's College Taunton as he takes it to the line. Oh, it's late. Jacob Mitchell takes it on the outside. He's got one man to beat. Beats him with the step with a good covering tackle. Now here's Charland. Opportunity now, oh. possibly for Taunton, but the ball is not the one that was required. And now from that one drop, it's all gone the other way. Christ College will go end to end, and Matthew Price will dot down for their third try of this final. All it took was one drop, swept up excellently well by Matthew Price, and he's gone the length. And that is the pain of sevens. Literally one mistake in the opposition 22 and you're underneath your posts. You've got to feel for King's College. I think that's happened twice now. Both times in the opposition 22 and then they've conceded a try from one mistake. And with 10 seconds left, the ref calls time on the half. And after some excellent play, it's Matthew Price's end-to-end -end run that is putting King's College to the sword. Despite a relatively even half of rugby with really talented play on both ends, the first half has ended with King's College three tries to one up against King's College Taunton. We'll be back for a blistering second half, I'm sure, very shortly with Next Gen's coverage of the Colson Sevens. Welcome back to what has been an unbelievable first half of rugby here at the Colson Sevens Cup oh. semi-final. And King's College's kickoff from Sharpland has just been picked up. If that was done on purpose, that's the best kickoff of the day. That was brilliant. Price College are off their feet. And Kings will come away with it. What a blistering start already. Oh, great Excellent hands. hands into the wide channels. And away goes Hopkins. Hopkins beats one. It's brought down well. And this time, it's a turnover. And Christ College goes straight away with it. There's no resting around here for the number 11, Finn O'Donovan. They've got an overlap here as well. If they can get that ball wide. One more pass. Oh, he's gone through. The number five doesn't need a pass. Owen Coyle. Ewan Kaur is on his own, oh. he's being chased, but Ewan Kaur cannot be caught. And just the story of the first half, one turnover inside their own 22 is all that this incredibly ruthless Christ College Breckenside needs to go coast to coast for the third time in this cup final. 
And I think that's the best way to describe it. They are ruthless. They get that ball in hand and they smell blood every time, don't they? You've got to feel sorry for King's College. They've worked so hard. They've got so close. And then just the turnovers, it's just, it's just killing them at the moment. But Brecken are just so aggressive over the breakdown. It'll be the try score from the first half. Matthew Price trying to add the extras. But still, it'll be uh, Christ College to get us underway once again following an excellent kickoff from uh, Charlie Sharland. He's been one of the best players of the day. But how do King's College get into this game when every mistake they made is punished with such ferocity? A bit like this, hopefully. A nice little breakaway try for them. Well, from the kickoff, it went over everyone. It skipped every man. And King's College, just like that, are back in the game. They need a little bit of luck, didn't they? They worked hard in that first half. They worked hard at the start of this half. And it's just, um, it hasn't gone their way. But that, a little bit of luck. And hopefully that'll get them back into the game a little bit. Perhaps the change in momentum from kickoff there just bounced over everyone. But it was taken excellently well uh, out in that wide channel. And it was, uh, it was a jog home with very little opposition. We see here from the kickoff, just bounced over every player, and then from here, it's just it's just gas. Yeah. It's pure pace. Perhaps a mismatch in that wide channel. And a good kickoff. Ooh. Knocked down by Green. Advantage. And it will come King's College's way oh, from that kickoff as well, a knock off in a knock on in the air. And perhaps the momentum has shifted King's yeah, College's way. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. You know, like you say, rugby's a little bit of luck as well. They've had they're going to get a little bit of luck now. They've got a scrum, an attacking scrum. A chance to get another try, and then it's literally a one-score game. It'll be Harry Passenger to feed from the number nine position. And it's a penalty there for wheeling the scrum. Rare you see that in the game of sevens, but Passenger will get underway. And perhaps there's an overlap on the outside, but the pass was just too testing for the uh, number 14. Will Hopkins had a good game so far. Yeah, they've got to take these opportun opportunities. Oh, they're bringing on their number eight and again now. Number eight's back on the pitch after having some rest time. And he was so destructive in the first half. Jack Perrin's also on in the number 14 shirt. For Christ College. Considering what we've seen from them so far, I'm slightly worried for King's College in this position. And it is clean ball. Even if it's wrapped up by a King's College man, Christ College will come away with it. Excellent feet and a good fend there. Here we go. See what they're going to do now. Offload back inside and a switch play onto this near side. Here he goes, Two Here he big goes fends. again. This, and it's the this same man for Christ College. Has been brilliant. Hasn't the number he? eight, Dylan Skyrim. He has been fantastic. Every time he gets the ball, he makes something happen. Whether it's an offload, whether it's a carry, or whether it's a try like that, that is fantastic. I think that's his second for the game, isn't it? The switch inside, two fens, and with a bit of gas, gets away from any King's College man. And perhaps with four minutes to go, he may have taken the game beyond King's College Taunton, who have, to their credit, played reasonably well, considering the 33 points that they've conceded. Yeah, the score does not reflect the effort that King's College have put into this game. They have been unlucky, obviously. One fend, two fend, crazy play there. Yeah. Credit has to go to Brecon. I mean, they have taken their chances very, very well. And with players like this on their team, they can literally score from anywhere. It will be uh, King's College to get away with O'Donovan on the 14 shirt. First in, play on. Claimed well by a Taunton man, but Release it's been play. turned over. And now, Christ College will play with the ball from inside their own, from just outside King's College is 22. And it's a high tackle there on by King's College man. And now with free ball to play with, who knows what Christ College can conjure up. Advantage over calls the referee, but still ball in Christ College possession. They spot an overlap on this far side. We'll see if they can use it. It's been picked off by the number five for King's College. Bit of respite for King's perhaps, as they look to build up the pitch now. We go two and one now. 
Two and right. one has been executed. Penalty advantage as well for that and slightly. He's back uh, on his feet again, though. To take the oh. <laughs> no advantage coming from that uh, tip tackle. Hey, Green. Hey, Green. So he made the tackle, tipped him beyond horizontal. He's come down and landed on the side. Red card. Oh, no, yellow. Yellow card there for uh, Christ College's man at the moment. He will miss the remaining, the remainder of this fixture. So let's see what uh, King's College can conjure up in the final two minutes of this cup final. Excellent footwork, take it on the outside. But a great physical contest there Backwards, from Christ College. And the ball is loose. And picked up by a Christ College man. Christ College are onto everything, aren't they? Literally every loose ball. No man down though. Oh. Excellent hands over the top there. And now it's a one-on-one -on -one to the line. Oh. The number five breaks his number six even breaks his tackle. And he will be away. And even the six-man Christ College side have still got enough physicality and skill to take it around King's College. They're literally playing with such freedom now, aren't they? Just really enjoying the final few minutes yeah. of this tournament. That was a great line there by Daniel Buffery on the outside. And the offloading out of the tackle was brilliant as well. Really, really good play. Excellent hands by Jack Perrins, number 14, the last man. <laughs> and that will be that. Despite an excellent day of rugby from King's College Taunton, who can be proud of their efforts, it's been an all-dominant Christ College Brecon, who have ran away with this final. They saw off the host in Colston in the semi-final, and now they've beaten perhaps the team of the day outside of themselves, of course, King's College Taunton, by a ginormous 40 points to 10. Your closing thoughts on the final, Tom, before you leave us? I think it was a great, great game of rugby, actually. I think it was um, after a long day of a long day of rugby. They put on a, a brilliant show. I thought King's College were very unlucky at parts, but Christ College Brecon were just fantastic in the end. Well, we'll be back for the presentations and the trophies, but uh, thank you to all of us for tuning in for all the rugby that's happened so far today. Thank you to our sponsors, Return to Play, and thank you also to our other sponsors, Coach Logic, for supporting the live stream. Thank you for Colson for being excellent hoax. Thank you, for, thank you to Tom for joining me on CoCom for these thank finals. It's been excellent to have you. And uh, we'll see you very shortly for some presentations and awards. The final score of the final game of the Colston Sevens, a thrilling conclusion to the rugby. Christ College Brecon 40, King's College Taunton 10. And Christ College will come away with the trophy. We'll be back very shortly for some more content towards the end of the day here at the Colston Sevens with Next Gen 15. Can I just invite all remaining spectators and players to come across to the tent ready for the presentation in the next few minutes, please. Now on, Charlie, we sit please. <laughs>
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to our coverage of the Colton Sevens. It's time for Next Gen to sign off as the presentations take page on pitch one here at Colson School in Bristol. The conclusion of the Colson Sevens leaves Christ College Brecon as winners. It's been a fantastic day of rugby. Thank you to all of our sponsors, Return to Play and Coach Logic. Thank you to Colston Sevens for your Colston School for your accommodation. And thank you as well for Next Gen for your continued fantastic coverage of schoolboy rugby. And congratulations to all the players who have won both the trophy plate, bowl and cup today. Another excellent day of schoolboy rugby brought to you by Next Gen. I've been Wilfred Kemsley. Thank you so much for your constant support of schoolboy rugby and of Next Gen 15. Hope you've enjoyed it. Goodbye. Introducing Next Gen 15, the new home school up. Well, where does this come from? Covering everything the school game has to offer in both the North and Southern Hemispheres. Oh, that's a great tackle! Oh. It's not good enough! One, two, skip a few and with the wheels! Highlighting tomorrow's stars, Next Gen 15 will be bringing you live games and regular updates of all the news and in-depth views on the global game. What's a kick? All your school rugby, all in one place. This is Next Gen 50.